want to make sure that uh, I'm not making things too loud for chat, but you want to be able to hear everything, don't you? And looking at OBS, that looks like that's about right there, actually. Hopefully the speech will be okay too. Very tempted to hit this purchase music button. This game came out in 1996. Um, and I don't think. Well, that this version didn't come out in 1996 because this was the director's cut. This version came out. I think early 2000s. Um, but yeah, I don't know if that links to an old website that's defunct now or. Let me investigate while we wait for people to filter in. I'm intrigued. This is either gonna go really well or really horribly. Oh my gosh! Um, hopefully that's not caused any problems for the captions, because it opened in the same window as the captions. Um, no it hasn't. It links to Apple Music. You can buy the soundtrack on Apple Music. How strange is that? I mean, at least it's not a defunct website, but how odd. Of all the places to link to. Um, I have just realised that I didn't update the giveaway on Stream Elements, and we've had the same game in the giveaway for the last four streams, I think. So I'm gonna quickly do that. Hello, Rust. Welcome on in. How are you doing today? Hello, Ash. Welcome on in. How are you doing? So I, I don't think anybody wants Hyper Knight, so we're gonna we're gonna close that. We're gonna go back to the giveaways page and we're gonna set up a new one. Let's see what I've got in in the folder that we've got. Um hmm. You'll have to forgive me, I'm still feeling a little bit um tired from yesterday's stream. It was a, a wonderful stream, it really was, but I played Signalis for a lot longer than I was intending to. Um, so I'm a little bit, a little bit on the airy side still, as it were. Not trying to be as gentle as I was last night, but um, Slow's already awake. Mm. Yeah, let's go for that. Nearly there. Has he died since I was last? Oh gosh! Yeah, I can imagine. My PC's having issues. Uh, my motherboard is slowly dying. Um, it has been for a few years now, but um, it's gotten particularly bad um, since we moved house. So... Uh, uh, I completely understand the could have done without that kind of situation that it's occurred there. But, right. That is the giveaway updated. Prize command also updated. And now we can get on with the game. <laughs> Motherboard and processor was what went on mine too. See, I think my motherboard was faulty when I first got the machine, but I didn't realise because I wasn't using it in a way that would have identified the issue. Um, it wasn't until I started needing to plug things into my PCIe slots that I found out that one of them didn't work at all. And uh, now the other PCIe slot has failed. 
Um, so all of my USBs are kind of plugged into a rat's nest of uh, extenders and cables to make everything work the way it normally does on my streams. I am going to have to get a new motherboard soon, but because of the age of my computer, I'm going to have to get a whole new setup, basically. Um, I mean, this motherboard is perfectly fine for certain tasks, just I can't expand the system because so much of it's failing. Uh, I can't even plug any monitors into the motherboard anymore because the, the graphical inputs have failed on it. <sighs> but, you know, these things happen. We'll get there. We'll get there. Technology, eh? Okay. So, having discovered that um, clicking the purchase music button takes us to Apple Music, of all things. Um, we're going to actually start playing the game now. Um, please do let me know if the music's too loud, or if during the course of playing the game the speech or sound effects are too loud. It's really difficult to gauge, particularly with the speech and sound effects, if they're at the right level, because the game doesn't give you any um, example audio when you're adjusting the sliders. So the only audio I've got an example for the volume of is the music at the moment. Okay. Hello Sinister, welcome on in. Yeah, this is one of the first point and click adventures I ever played uh, back in the early 2000s. Which I think is when the director's cut came out. The original game came out in 1996. Uh, and this is a, an English produced game as well. Paris. City of love, romance and dreams. So they say. I used to say it too. But ever since that day. Day of the murder. I have always associated my beloved Paris. With death. I was at home having a bath when my editor called. Collard, get your ass over to the Palais Royale now. You got an interview. With Pierre Carchamp. Yes, the Pierre Carchamp. No photos, so leave your gear at home. He has for you personally. Don't ask me why. Anyhow, this could be big, so if he makes a pass, don't forget. Just smile, say yes, and keep taking notes. So charming, and so very apt. Pierre Carchon was a media king, a national hero, and one of the most infamous adulterers in Europe. He and his wife Imelda were just one step down from royalty. Whoa, I hate mimes, but unless you humor them, they don't go away. Here I was, the palace of the I media king too, and the ice like queen. That. I pressed the doorbell and set in motion a chain of events which would change my life forever. Yes, what is it? Good. Madame, my name is Nico Collard. I'm here to see Monsieur Carchon. Come up, we're on the first floor. Madame Carchon, it's a pleasure to meet you. 
Yes, I'm sure. The Ice Queen was certainly living up to her reputation. Not even the French like mines, indeed. I can't hear you, I'm dead. Holy Will you be shit. staying for the interview? <laughs> Mademoiselle, so I know little of my husband's business here. affairs, and I care even less. I certainly have no intention of watching him pour over yet another pretty little journalist. Pretty? You're too kind, madame. Fucking hell. Um, please, e excuse me for a moment. Ah, that, the that talented is... and very that beautiful Mademoiselle Collard. <laughs> Such a pleasure to meet you at last. Monsieur so, so much I am honored. No, oh, I'm sure you are. Call me Pierre, please. But I do not flatter you idly. I was a friend of your father. He was a great man. Oh, my father? He never so mentioned. So he and I were very close. Hello, and then his death. So tragic. Oh, come on in. I must. Imelda, your damned cat's in my study again. Another Ming vase, I suppose. <laughs> Another. Excuse me for one Another. moment, my dear girl. You journalists are getting younger each year. Perhaps it's the rest of the world getting older, madame. That was no cat. My God, what? It was Mr. the mine. <laughs> You'd think the mime was invisible with the way she walked over then. Shots He's dead. I must call the police. You'd better stay here. There was a man. It was the mime. Do you think he... Well, I believe we can rule out suicide, don't you? No wonder they called her the Ice Queen. She would have been top on my list of suspects if I hadn't seen the attacker myself. And if I hadn't come across a couple of murders just like this already. One of the most important men in Europe murdered. And here was I, Nico Coulard, alone at the scene of the crime. Should I wait for the cops or start my own investigation? It was a no-brainer. <laughs> okay, so I think that was a little bit loud for everybody. Before I do any more game-type stuff, a couple of things. One, um, Sinitha, that is awesome. Best of luck in finding your hotel. Um, I was hoping to go to Warhammer Fest next year, um, but that's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, maybe in a couple of years' time when things are settled here. Um, and Rustbot, massive, massive thank you for that uh, tip there. That was genuinely, tears came to my eyes. I was so surprised and I really do appreciate it. Thank you so, so much, Russ. It's very kind of you. Very generous. Uh, Ash, thank you for the treat for me. And hello, Cyborg. Welcome in. How are you doing? Um, whilst I'm digging something out of the treat jar for myself, um, was the speech too loud? Was the music too loud? Was it all too loud? It was quite loud for me, but I've got a different audio route to you lot, so... I screamed out by mother for entering the sitting room this time. She even made fun of how I looked. When... Oh, buff, I'm so sorry to hear that, sweetheart. That is so horrid. I hope you can have a little bit of escapism here as we, um... I don't know if the microphone picked that up, but Porthos is scratching his chin and kicking the floor very violently as he does so. Um... Yeah, I, I hope you can get a little bit of escapism from that here, and we can just sort of chill. It was quite loud. Okay, I'll see if I can turn it down from here without having to go back to the main menu. Uh, the treat for me, Ash, is a fizzy cola bottle. Thank you very much, sweetheart. Right. Porthos is such a good boy. He really is. I love a fizzy cola. Me too, Ash. And I think they're the vegan-friendly ones as well, because um, vegan-friendly sweets tend to have, for want of a better description, a more al dente kind of feel to them when you bite into them. And the non-vegan ones are very rubbery. And I much prefer vegan sweets as a result. 
because I, I like the that they sort of compress a little bit and then they break rather than resisting. <laughs> How did Smallborg's uh, Remembrance Sunday Parade go, Cyborg? I think Rust said that a lot better than I managed to, um, but that was what I was aiming for. Thank you, Rust. There's a reason you're a VIP. <laughs> okay, so this is from the sort of the early days of point-and-click adventure games, and a lot of people didn't know how to play them. So this game gives you very clear, solid instructions on how to do the point and click. Porthos, that's not food, sweetheart. Get your nose out of it. You're trampling all over me magic cards. Which are on the floor because of you anyway. Go to your bed. Go on. Go lay down. Ash, thank you for the treat for Porthos. Good catch, well done. Full of wisdom and bad advice. Good wisdom and bad advice. You and me both, Rust. Went well, he was extremely well behaved. You get a bit upset towards the end due to the music, but he marched as he was taught. He kept quiet and didn't fanny about. Mum both gave him two Kinder eggs for being so good. Oh, that's so lovely. I'm I'm glad it went well. And I think I'd probably get a bit upset at the music if I was in a march like that as well. It can be quite a lot um, in terms of sensory overload. And I'm I'm normally okay with stuff like that, but you know, big crowds, loud noises, it can it can be a bit much. So good on him, good on him. <laughs> Very brave lad. But they actually um, give us a nice explanation of all of the different icons in the game. So a briefcase, which is our inventory, makes sense. A diary icon, so that we can access the diary. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the diary is our save function, but it's also like a, a potted history of what we've done during the game as well. I might be wrong there. We can get hints and um, help with the interface using the hint button. Ah, no, here, here we go, look. So the spanner is our save, uh, restore and adjust settings, which is what we're going to need to click on first because we need to set the audio up a little bit better. Click that. There's our little spanner. Uh, audio. Okay. So the music's quite far down. I'm going to turn the speech down to about here. We want the speech to be louder than the music. And put the sound effects just a little bit above the music. That should be okay. If it's now too quiet as we're playing through the game, do let me know. Um, there doesn't appear to be any subtitles. And unfortunately, I didn't have time to check because I had to fix a problem with um, the install for this game for Steam. Um, separate voice and music options. I hate it when games don't do, yet, do that. Yeah, same. Um, because there's no subtitles at the moment, I'll see if I can find like a subtitles patch for it um, before next weekend. Um, but if you need me to turn the volume up on the speech in particular so that uh, it's easier to hear what's being said, do let me know. Let's have a look at our diary. Oh god, that's tiny writing. Good job I've got my glasses on. <laughs> uh, Palace Royal. Yeah, Karshan interview. Relaxing in bath when I was disturbed by phone call from my editor, Ronnie. He asked me to interview Pierre Karshan, media tycoon and serial philanderer. On the case, like a shot. Creeping mime outside Karshan's apartment. Uh, Madame Karshan cold as ice. Madame Karshan uh, Monsieur Karshan. Um, suave and charming, living up to his reputation, played along with his flirtation. The sound of a bar smashing, and Monsieur Karshan went to investigate. A gunshot, I rushed to the room and found Mime standing over Karshan's body. So yeah, it's a potted history of what's happened so far in the game. The 
which is handy because we're going to be playing this over the course of a few weeks and uh, my memory's terrible. Oh, Wicked Cyborg. That sounds fun. So, as we've seen in a few other point-and-click adventure games throughout the course of uh, this stream series, uh, when there's something we can interact with, we get a, an eyeball icon, but when there's not, we've just got the normal character. Let's have a look at the books. The bookcase was filled with obscure first editions. Okay, so we've got teeny tiny subtitles at the very top of the screen, but I don't have any um, ability to make them larger or smaller or put them into a, uh, a less funky font. So I'll see if I can fix that before the next stream. There's bound to be something I can do. Hero Quest is the best game ever made, and anyone who says otherwise is wrong. Hello, Cypher. Welcome in. How are you today? Have you been getting into paper props again? Something about the paperwork side just tickles the serotonin section of my brain. I really like making props for RPs. Um, the very first RP I ever played in um, was a, a Dark Heresy campaign, and we had a... That was fun without the raven. Unfortunately, you won't get the raven in this game. But I'm, I might see what I can do about updating that particular command to have a visual element at some point in the future. Just for you, Cypher. Um, <clears throat> uh, and my adventuring party, for want of a better description, uh, did something wrong. Um, and we got an inquisitorial summons. And the GM actually printed out like a proper inquisitorial summons for each of us. And I still have mine in a box. Uh, kept it as a, a fond memory of my first role playing experience. Uh, but I love little things like that. They really add depth to a world, I think. Um, I designed a poster for when I was doing my Fallout London campaign that is for Nukazade. It's like Nuka Cola, but it's Lucasade. Um, and you know, stuff like that is just it's a really fun way to add a bit of additional colour, I think. Um, when I cosplayed as a particular character, I printed an ID badge off to match the character that uh, the, the ID card that they had in the show I was cosplaying from as well. It's the little things that make the difference, isn't it? And thank you, Cyborg. I'll take a look after the stream. Just got back from the remembrance service. How did it go? So we've got this statue over here. Just gonna casually Reverse walk as close to the Pierre corpse Cousin, as possible. Humble servant of La France. Okay, so this time we've got a um, pair of cogs spinning. I'm glad to hear it, Cypher. Um, now, those of you that were here for the playthrough of The Seventh Guest will recognise that kind of um, point-and-click idea. Uh, this means we've got a puzzle to solve here, or there is an action to be performed, rather than just something to look at. So we're going to look at everything in the room first. We've got a, a pointing hand, another uh, thing that folks will have seen The Seventh Guest playthrough. For those of us unaware, what's Remembrance Service? Um, so today is Remembrance Sunday. Um, it is a, a, a national holiday, I believe it's only uh, UK, a, a national holiday remembering uh, those lost during the wars. Um, it's another bus to the same guy, isn't it? Pierre Cochon again. His eyes seem to follow me around the room. It's the 11th of November is the official day, but we always have remembrance services on the Sunday um, of that week.
and it's what all the poppies and things like that are about. Sweden was always neutral, so we don't have a service like that. Yeah, that's fair, Ross. I think, uh, for, for my perspective on it, um, I'm not a big fan of war. <laughs> um, but I do think it's important to remember those that we've lost. Um, so what one thing I always like to point out to people is that the UK has a lot of Imperial War Museums, um, whereas in Japan, the Hiroshima Center, which is the building that um, the atomic bomb was dropped on, is now the um, Hiroshima Peace Museum. Hello, Zithio. Welcome in. And I know it's just terminology, and really they're talking about the same thing, just from different perspectives. But calling it a peace museum, uh, a museum showing us what we've done, what we could do better, as it were. We go for peace, not for war. Yeah, I hope you're doing well today, Sophia. It's lovely to have you here. Hello, Tabby. How are you doing? I uh, got the uh, custom shout out sorted. I'm I'm so sorry that I hadn't managed to do that before I moved house. All sorted now, though. I hope it's okay. Okay, so we don't have anything else we can look at in this room specifically, other than the corpse. I, su I suppose we should look at the corpse, shouldn't we? <laughs> Let me, yeah. Let's not wait for forensics. Let not, let's not wait for the police. Mine let's just tamper with the evidence. Together, but I had an idea that this was no ordinary man. I'd come across this murderer before and written about him. The costume killer, at least that's what I called him. I honestly don't understand the point of the subtitles being there with how small they are. It's so tiny. Agreed, Rust. Agreed. Listening to a whole bunch of Carly Rae Jepsen after that Gemma King stream. Good, good. Carly's great. Um, I'll be honest, DMAC kind of put me on to her. I've never bothered to listen to her stuff with any real focus for um he sent me a couple of her tracks to listen to and i'm hooked now a really really talented musician it was one of my hair clips my favorite in fact it must have fallen when i was knocked down he for, for those that weren't here when it happened uh a mime broke into this guy's uh mansion shot him and then punched us in, in the face um and it's like a proper sucker punch as well uh, i closed his eyes it was the least i could do for the poor fellow some people hate searching corpses for clues me i'm okay fucking with mimes reminds me of an old yes, boyfriend in his pocket i found a ticket stamped bateau de la conciergerie taking the ticket meant i tampered with the evidence there was no going back. I now. hate to break it to you, love, but you tampered with the evidence by closing his eyes and moving his coat and picking up your hair clip. There was already no going back. You may as well just add more evidence tampering to the list. Carchon had point. been shot. Are you sure? Are you sure that he's been shot? Carchon had been shot. It looks like that's all we can interact with in here. I opened his eyes. Best to leave the crime scene as I found it. <laughs> okay, so a thing that forensic scientists can do if they need to. Maybe it's just, he just dropped some ketchup and he's completely catatonic because he's wasted ketchup. Yeah, that's exactly what it is, Zithia. Bit of strawberry jam. 
Mime is a terrible thing to waste. Hello, Martel. How are you doing? Um, it's not often done, and eyelids are very difficult to do it with as a specific part of the body. But forensic scientists can lift fingerprints off of skin and sometimes even clothes, depending on the kind of clothing. Um, but she's just, she's, she has poured this corpse. Like she, she's literally just, you know, rubbing her fingerprints and her um, trace evidence all over this guy. It doesn't really matter if she leaves the crime scene as she found it at this point, because she has just left evidence all over him that is going to make this um, investigation extremely difficult for the police. The worst mime? Application Jason. <laughs> Actually, that's the best mime. <laughs> nice one, Zathio. Well done. <laughs> oh, he fell on his keys. Yeah. Okay. Um, We're, we're going to back out of this. Oh, she's put his jacket back. This is a forensic nightmare, this is. Yeah, that's that's a good way to put it, Sinister. That's a very good way to put it. Okay, so we can either explore the rest of the house. <laughs> Mimes, their finger guns are deadly. I'm still embittered that that mime used an actual a visible small, ladder. A round piece of glass had been cut out of the pane. This was a professional job. Look, if it was a professional job, you wouldn't have known he was there. It's the sloppiest um, professional killer I've ever seen, honestly. Didn't even use a silencer, Tabby. Didn't even use a silencer. There's broken glass on the floor. Just sloppy work, really. Half pay for this job, definitely. But you have seen them by the Caribbean music starts playing. <laughs> this is the point when we find out that um, this entire game is actually just somebody's um, Hitman playthrough gone horribly, horribly wrong. Maybe a guy outside walking around in his underpants and a mime costume casually stuffed into the bushes. The killer must have used a ladder to reach the window. He was long gone. Guess he folded that ladder up, popped it in his pocket and took it with him. We're not going to comment on the fact that because of the age of this game, she just basically floated. A mime costume, 47? Yes, exactly. To be fair, that would be a funny game trying to solve other people's Hitman gameplay. I would genuinely be down for that. I've watched Outside Xbox Three Ways to Play. <laughs> I, I, I think that would be quite fun. Like We've got Viscera Cleanup Detail, which is um, a parody on the idea of what happens after an action game, an action shooter protagonist comes in and destroys everything and then fucks off. Nary a care in the world. Um, but I, I think a point and click uh, adventure in which you try and solve Hitman, like some of the world's most well known Hitman playthroughs, bizarre murder logic would be hilarious. The police could turn up at any minute. Clown 47. There were keys to the murder, <laughs> and I needed to find them. You know, for a game that was done in the mid nineties, it's it's very, very pretty and it's very well put together. Bearing in mind that this was only a few years after uh The Secret of Monkey Island, which was still doing pixel art, uh, and it was before 
Monkey Island 3. It is indeed, Tabby. A medieval pageant. Originally Has it not updated the, the tapestry um, must have cost a fortune. I updated it on my phone. Um, I'm going to check now. Hello, Torful. It, do, it does say... Yeah, okay. Cool. I panicked and thought Twitch hadn't updated when I told it to. How are you doing today, Tortle? Yeah, I think a for the time it was made. Balls table with an antique cloth. The Melda had taste, but hey, ah, no, no, it's fine, Tabby. Don't worry. Taste is easy. Quite hungry. How are you? I'm good, thanks. I'm a little bit sleepy because I stayed up so late last night. Um. Well, I'm on my second cup of coffee. Speaking of crime mimes, if anyone has seen anything of Miraculous Ladybug, a fantastic show, by the way, well worth a watch. The mime is probably my favourite villain. He actually does do that thing where the things he mimes become physical and invisible objects from ropes, clubs to cars. It's great. It really is, isn't it, Rust? Miraculous Ladybug it is a, a fantastic little show um, and well worth a watch. I have a game in the cupboard somewhere called Kill Dr. Lucky. It's essentially a Cluedo prequel game. Oh, that sounds interesting. I see the library cards set on HP Lovecraft Historical Society. I really want to get a bunch of books about them and make them into a book. Do it, cyborg. A sticky plushie on my desk. Oh, that's adorable, Cypher. Oh, that's fair, Liafora. I can understand that. Why did I call you Liafora then? I always call you Tabby. That's so weird. Thanks, Brain. Kill Dr. Lucky is a great game. I'll have to check it out. I've got a very fancy looking handkerchief. I reckon here. that cloth might just turn out to be useful. Oh, look at that. Even my fingernail wouldn't fit into such a small hole. Okay. <laughs> but we did pick something up that we can use probably for that. Um, but we're going to have a little wander first. It was a pick tube up a few things. of acrylic paint. French ultramarine. Just the colour I was after for my bathroom. I'm oh, sorry, no. I have to go. Someone is... Oh, Young there we lady, go. Lady, what are you doing? Oh, this paint. <laughs> it's my favourite colour. For God's sake, keep the damn stuff. So, she is coming across as an ice queen to us, but she's actually really shook up about what's happened. She is upset that her husband's been killed. Um, But she's trying to put across a specific sort of public image which is a, a, a very high society thing to do. It's a, a nice little bit of writing there. Um, it's almost like the people that wrote this are English and are used to what the royals are like. We've actually got two points on this a table that we can look at. A antique table. Ah, okay, that's just the table itself. Let's, uh, we've only got her to talk to. Should we talk to her first, actually? Let's talk to her first. We should try and explore the room as it is, as fully as possible before we start solving puzzles. Just in case we miss anything. I don't think this game has soft locks or hard locks in it. Um, it's not a Sierra game. Um, but you never know. Imelda had talent, but I certainly wasn't going to tell her that. Clearly already hates Imelda. We've got a telephone that we can interact with and we've got Imelda that we can talk to. I've never really liked the opening and closing mouse icon um, for talking to characters in point and clicks because it just looks a bit weird to me. It conveys the point very quickly and easily. But, um... Yeah. Hello <laughs> it's a bit weird. Shocked. 
but still every bit as hostile. Hello, Kian. Welcome in. How are you? Excuse me, madame. Yes? I'm sorry, but that mime is just fucking horrifying. Um... Let's have a chat with her I'm so about sorry for your her loss, husband. Madame. No, you're not. You're a journalist. Journalists don't feel sorry. Not so. We shall see. Ah. And now we know why she's being so hostile towards us. She doesn't like journalists. <laughs> to be fair, at this sort of point in history, uh, journalists were... Not as heavily regulated as they are now. I know they're not particularly heavily heavily regulated now, but um, journalism and paparazzi were things that were sort of a free-for-all. Well, who does? They go around killing clowns. Well, yeah. Um, so a lot of people, particularly the ones that got bad press because of the journalists, would be generally quite hostile towards them. I don't know whether you're saying that with dismay or not, Cyborg, because I absolutely adore the Dewey Decimal System. I appreciate I'm strange, but the Dewey Decimal System's good. It's a, a, a neat way of organising books. I'm just going to knock back the last of my coffee uh, before it goes cold. Ah. <sighs> I ask her Why about her husband now? Sent for me? What did he want to discuss? I have no idea. His business was his business. He never told you anything? No. And frankly, I preferred it that way. How did your husband know my father? I have no idea. You didn't know him? Thierry Coulard? Pierre knew a lot of people I didn't know. Most of them women. She's not bitter, though. The decimal system is great in my opinion. Yeah, it is. It's, it's grand. Why would a mime want to kill your husband? Pierre had plenty of enemies. Half the husbands in Paris for a start. This is quite a scoop for you. I suppose you're already inventing the headlines. Just because I am a journalist. Don't patronise me. You're all cut from the same cloth. Do you have any moral sense at all? The dialogue system is a bit weird. This is fun though. Do we want to be good or do we want to be evil? Are we going Paragon or Renegade, folks? <laughs> um, so this game comes from the same sort of school of thought as Sam and Max did in terms of the way in which the dialogue system is put together. Uh, by having icons to represent the dialogue options rather than um, actual text, it doesn't spoil the conversation in at all. Uh, now, the reason they did that um, in Sam and Max was because they didn't want to spoil the punchlines of the jokes that they were telling. Because Sam and Max is a, a very, very heavily, a, a very, very joke-heavy game. Which is not to its detriment in the slightest. It's been designed that way. It's a comedy game. This is not a comedy game. This is actually a fairly serious game for a point and click, especially at the time uh, when you were, when you had things like Monkey Island and Sam and Max coming out, and then there's this, nice which is moist, this me, sort of political intrigue, conspiracy theory, and cults based game. Torpal, thank you very much for the hydrate. I hope you're doing well today. Um. But it has taken cues from LucasArts games in that it's tried to make sure it's not spoiling the storytelling by giving you the story before you've actually had a chance to interact with it. Thank you for the posture check and the stretch as well. I'll do those quickly now. Oh, 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 I don't know if the microphone picked that up, but I cracked my knuckles then by accident. That was unfortunate. <laughs> okay. 
I, I think I think we we try to be the the exception that proves the rule when it comes to journalists, and and we go for the the good guy option. Yes. That's why I do this job. You do it to see your name in print, as if my editor gets the byline. I just do the work. Well, don't expect my sympathy. The police will be here soon, madame. Is there anybody you would like me to contact? Family, friends? No. I have no family. Pierre and I were... He was all I had, really. Not much, was it? The dutiful wife? That was my role. He never talked, never let me in. I know one thing, madame. What? If you want to find out who killed your husband, then you let me do the job, not the police. Why? How do I know I can trust you? <sighs> your husband invited me here today because he needed me. I think he knew somebody wanted to kill him, and he knew I could help. I'd, I'd love to know how we figured that out. You're wrong. I was onto his killers already. I am sure of it. Please, you owe it to him. I don't know. All I need is a few more minutes to look around before the police come. You really do have a moral sense, don't you? I trust so few people. And perhaps Pierre really did think that you could help. Of course it wouldn't have stopped him seducing you, too. Here, take this. It's the key to the drawing room next to the library at the end of the hall. It was Pierre's room. I rarely went in there. I couldn't. I was too scared of what I might find. Thank Seems you. like these two didn't communicate with each other very much. Like there was no one I needed to phone. Not until I had solved this case. Okay, so let's have a look at that suspicious hole. Seems like a loveless marriage. Um, he was a, a serial philanderer. Um, and she turned a blind eye. They may not necessarily have been loveless, but it seems like they'd grown apart a lot. And she very clearly resents him for his womanising ways as well. But there's a, a, a potential that all of that could have been avoided if they'd just communicated with each other. Who knows? We certainly won't find out. Okay, to use an inventory item on a background object, click on that item and hold the mouse button. While continuing to hold the mouse button, drag the item over a hotspot and release when it highlights with a gold outline. Nice little tutorial there. We have this little hairpin. Uh -huh. Ta-da! Nickel, you are just so damn good at this stuff. Instead of comforting Imelda, I was ransacking her flat. Why? Because it's fun. there was something going on here, and I had to get answers before the cops arrived. And hey, she'd been rude to me, so she had it coming. <laughs> That's a bit harsh. Now we were getting somewhere. So we've got a painting we can look at, we've got a desk we can investigate, a couch that we can potentially rummage around in the back off for change, uh, and that's it in here. Okay, so let's start with the painting. The painting showed the casuals together. In no worries, Cypher. You take care. Said, Thank you so much for popping in today. Country. I hope you have a what great rest of your day. There they are together. They apparently have two dogs. Not seen hiding a hair of them, though. The painting was attached firmly to the wall. There was the very faintest of clicks. Oh, look Behind at that. The a wall safe. Was a safe. We've seen a lot of wall safes in the last 24 hours. <laughs> okay, so we need a key. 
which looks suspiciously like this key. Ta da! In the safe was some kind of artifact. There were strange symbols. It looks on like moldy bread. It looked like the printer's blocks I'd made at art school. If there was one thing I'd learned about symbols, they are always important. But these symbols scratched into stone were impossible to read. It is moldy bread. to find a way of printing them. <laughs> at least the stone was round. But what could I use for ink? And what could I print on? Sure, I was stealing, but I knew Imelda didn't know about the artifact. And Carchon was past caring. Left a hoagie in there. Oh no. So, uh, at one of my previous jobs, um, I I was working in the office still. This was pre-COVID, and uh, there was a a guy in my team whose nickname was Prawn Salad because he brought a prawn salad into work one day. Completely forgot have it for lunch left it in the team like fire safe and then forgot to take it out and it stayed in there for like a month and we worked in a tiny little room there was like 12 of us in this room uh with that that fire safe Thankfully, this all happened before I joined the team, so I never had to deal with it. But I pity the poor cleaning crew that had to try and make that room usable again. Yeah, that's fair, Mod Hell. <laughs> okay, let's go rummaging for change. This wasn't the time for me to lie on this sofa doing my Marie Antoinette impression. No, it is very popular at parties, especially with gay guys. Don't ask me why. Okay. That's interesting. The sofa was antique. For one horrible moment, I had an image of a naked cochon wriggling around on it with a young journalist. Oh. Cleaning crew, aka Nine Tailed Fox. Yeah. <laughs> Things like that really do mark this out as being something different from stuff that had come before. Hello there. Hi, Wheezy. <laughs> How you doing, friend? Um. As expected, the desk was yet another priceless antique yawn. The blotter and in tray had clearly been placed with mathematical precision. So we're going to move them about, obviously. My heart skipped a beat. It was a carved elephant. But not just any carved elephant. It had been made by my father. I knew for certain because in my apartment I had its exact twin. Carved into a box he had made. So Kosho had known my father. They really must have been friends. I decided to take the carved elephant. It clearly meant nothing to me. <laughs> Not one off by two millimeters. Now we're just going to steal the elephant. What have we got in our pocket? It was a boat ticket stamped Bateau de la Conciergerie. When I was a little girl, Papa used to take me on the Bateau Mouche as a treat. What we're going to do? We're going to put blue paint in the tray. I'd spread blue paint over the bottom of the tray. It was ruined. I was a very bad, bad girl, but also quite a clever one. Mood. I didn't need a sheet of blotting paper. Not while it was blank. I don't think we need to... Uh, I think we can just put the, the thing in the paint. Yeah. I rolled She's the put that back in her jacket until it was completely coated. 
She's just put paint all over the inside of her jacket. Alright, thank you very much for being subscribed for two months. Welcome in. How Is are this you doing deja vu? Today? Yo, it's just resubscribed. It Hobby's was hype. kind of coded message. It read, Sub judici. I may not have learned a lot as a journalist, but that was a term I knew well. It means a legal case that is, that is before the court. Below it was a sequence of letters that made no sense. I suddenly realized there was a connection between the boat ticket and the coded message. The boat ticket was stamped Bateau de la Conciergerie. The Conciergerie on the Ile de la Cité, by the river, housed the ancient law courts. So, sub judice could in this case mean literally under the law courts, below the conciergerie. I was pretty sure I'd found all I could here. And besides, all this opulence was making me pine for my regular life of poverty. This was a huge story. It was also one heck of a puzzle Shots with fired. a lot of pieces missing. But I was going to crack it. And if I could just remember the name of that fancy prize you get for being an ace journalist, I was definitely going to win it this time. I suppose that's a good way to approach it. How did the move go? The move went okay. Um, a few hiccups. Uh, but we're in now. Porthos is very clearly settled. Um, cause he sleep. <clears throat> there you go. Now you can actually see his sleepy little face. Um, it's not moving. If not, indeed, indeed. Uh, yeah, we're in. We're settled. We went for our first like little excursion um, yesterday, like proper excursion since we've moved in. Steady now, cyborg. Um, and that was really nice. Yeah, we're we're getting there slowly. Still living in a box fort, but we'll get there. Hello, Steen. How are you doing? Welcome in. Locked. Not surprising, really. What do you know? Locked. Uh, let me use this key. It didn't work, no. but I guess it would have been surprising if it had. Lived in the same place for three years and stuff still in boxes. Yeah, that's fair. We've had that situation before. But we technically only just finished getting everything out of boxes at the old place when we moved. So. And Slow likes to remind me of that. Okay, so she can pick a simple lock, but not a more complicated one. Good to know. Wait, people unpack their boxes? Sometimes. The only reason I've been unpacking them is because I want to find something. Um, but has for want of a better description been lost during the move um i'm sure it'll be around somewhere i just i can't find it at all i don't want to move again mod hail it was so distressing this time i just never want to do it again now Only in the game, unpacking. I've 100 percented that, so yes, that's accurate. <laughs> Can I leave? Is she going to let I me leave? I couldn't leave without saying goodbye to Imelda. I mean, we could. Fine, we'll say goodbye. Did you find anything useful? This carton. Keep on proximity sealed. It was Pierre's. What does the statue have to do with? Please, I need to know. He was given it by a friend, something to do with Africa. He never explained any more. No, but I think it was important to him, always on display. Why? It was carved by my father. Oh, I see, I didn't know. Imelda, I will do everything I can to find the killer. Thank you, my dear. And if the police ask, don't worry, you were never here. Sub judice was the key. I was going to have to find a way under the conciergerie. I decided to head straight for the quayside on the Ile de la Cité. 
If there was a way of getting under the conciergerie, it would have to be from there. I love how they've both gone, yeah, she was never there. Um, if the police Carl decide wasn't to the investigate type messing further, about when they leave her. They're going to find something evidence of her. <laughs> something that got him killed. There'll be hair, there'll be skin, his fingerprints. She, she's like, she, she's basically gone into that building and licked everything. Her fingerprints are everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Her fingerprints are everywhere. And she's left a load of evidence in the drawing room. Like, there's paint in that tray that shouldn't be there. You've got a reverse image of what's on the printing roll. Um, you wear gloves for a reason. Exactly, Kian. You wear gloves and you tidy up after yourself because otherwise people know what you've been up to. An old boyfriend of mine owned a barge once. Dampest relationship I ever had. In every way. Sure that lady has ways of making evidence disappear. Yes. Very, very papery, expensive ways of making evidence disappear. I mean, it's a massive fucking house. I'm, I'm sure she's fine. The fence wouldn't move. Curses. We don't have superhuman strength. We'll try this one anyway. You never know. This fence wouldn't move either. The animations are so smooth in this, considering when it was made. They did a very, very good job. Ah, the magic of mass amounts of government-issued and regulated pieces of paper. <laughs> Indeed. The cross looked familiar. I'd seen it before. It was embroidered on the lace cloth I'd picked up at Cochon's apartment. I knew I was on the right track. I wasn't leaving yet. I had a hunch there was more to find. So she's picked up a cloth, which we still have in our inventory which has the same marking as this bit of stone outside of Arshan's apartment. Um, and she's inferred from something that looked more like a piece of stale bread than um, what it was supposed to be, uh, that she needs to be down here. This feels a little bit like confirmation bias. This is, this is all very, uh, this rock wards off elephants. How do we know? Because there's no elephants around here. The bread effect, yes. An ancient bread effect. I tried pushing the fence, but it wouldn't move. A strange pair of locks stopped the latches from releasing the gate. This reminds me of a puzzle. I should play Professor Layton on stream sometime, shouldn't I? Okay. So, what can we move here? Anything? Nothing? There we go. It's a slider puzzle. Um, can we move this one? No. So we can only move them... This way. Professor Layton is sort of the logical progression of the concept of point-and-click adventure games, I think, for a, a more modern audience, specifically with a 3DS, a, a, a DS or a 3DS. It's a handheld console. Um, just sort of moving things around at the moment to gauge where I can move things. Um, find child labour is the logical progression of a lot of games. Yeah, he does make the kid do a lot of stuff, doesn't he? Okay. So this one is constantly blocked by these two. And will always be until we've managed to solve the puzzle. These two can move. And then that can move, but it doesn't move far enough to do anything with this. 
what we really need to do. Ah, we can actually move stuff over the locking mechanism. So let's move that there. Move that up. And then... Move that there. See, I was avoiding the, the locking mechanism because I didn't think we'd be able to put stuff over it, but of course we can. <laughs> Playing Frostpunk right now and you bet the kids are pulling their weight. Good, Steen. You, you teach them the meaning of hard work. Um, can we put that there? Potentially. I'm not sure how that solves anything, really. Ah, that's how it solves anything. Like that. That goes up there. That goes there. That goes there. That goes there. That goes there. A hankering to play the Frogware Sherlock Holmes games now. I really like the Frogware Sherlock Holmes games. They're a lot of fun. They're janky. They're very janky. But I kind of appreciate that. Um, See, now we need to get these out of the way. And this is blocking our path. Hmm. There we go. Yes. One down, one to go. That wasn't so bad. Once I realised that I could put stuff here, it was a lot easier. Trying to do it without covering the locking mechanism up was uh, not good. No, that won't do anything for us right now. So on this one, we can go over the bolt as well. Useful information. No point in moving that. Then we block ourselves in there. That. That maybe. Um. That didn't quite work. But you can't move them sideways. We need to get this one out of the way, which means getting this one out of the way. Hmm. If I exit out, does it reset it? It does. Also useful information. <laughs> I like how it's telling me what I need to do. Blocks move along their length, some vertically, some horizontally. Yeah. Just in case I hadn't figured it out. Which I had, I'm just not very good at it. Hmm. Let's assess the situation. We can move this one, and we can move this one. But we move this one, and nothing else becomes movable. Move that one. But again, all that allows us to move is this which doesn't really do much for us right now. Put that back where it is. The only one that's really going to make any difference is this one, because it allows us to move that all the way up there. And we don't 
need to worry too much about blocking this off at the moment. Move that there, move that there. That's how we get it right to the end. Move that back there. So that has to go downwards. There's not quite enough space to keep it out of the way at the top. And these will have to go either side as well, if I'm not mistaken. For now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Be there, be there. That needs to go to the left, otherwise it doesn't really help us any. See, this is the bit that's getting me. If we can move that out of the way, then everything else opens up for us nicely. Um, but the only way to move that out of the way is to move this. And this is in the way of that. I can't move it down. I can't move it up. I can't move it to the left. Blocks only move along their length. So, oh, 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 oh. Caught the diary as I was going there. That's massively helpful. Oh, no, that's the one I just pulled it out. Um, hmm. I want to move this. We want it to be out of the way. Interesting. Hmm. I think the one at the bottom right needs to get to the left. Yes, I agree. So figuring out how to do that is uh, the bit that's uh, getting me here. So many blocks getting in the way of each other. That leaves us with only these two and this one that can move. And then we can only move that up to there. You know what? How do I open the locks? That's not really a hint. But let's see what it does. Because I've never used the hint system in this either. Think ahead to the position the latch needs to be in. In order to work, you might be able to work out from the position which bars need to move and where. Okay. 
Reset it. It needs to be over here. We know this. Yeah, it it's explained how to like how to solve the puzzle, but not really given a hint on how to solve the puzzle. Um, so the hint system's not great. I can't say I'm particularly surprised by that turn of events, though. You know what? I'm gonna cheat. Because I can sort of see in my head what I think it needs to look like when it's done. But maybe I'm wrong. I watched Excalibur last night and most of the plot is just Arthur saying, Lancelot, don't bang my wife. <laughs> okay. So. Can you get the two vertical ones at the bottom to where the knobbly one and the gap above it currently are? Uh, that was another thing that I was aiming for, yeah. I'm thinking the solution is to get as many of those um, vertical 2.1s up to the top. But with this being up here as well, that's a bit of a predicament. So I have got a like a visual guide in front of me. And it looks like I was on the right track the first time round, judging by this. So I did that before. Yeah, with puzzles like this, if I if I keep bashing my head against it whilst I'm streaming, then um, I'll usually pull up a guide um, because I'm streaming for you folks. I'm I'm not doing this for my own entertainment. I'm doing it for your entertainment. And um, watching me fail at a puzzle repeatedly isn't exactly that entertaining. Um, we want to get through the story and you know see what's going on. Whereas if I was playing this off stream, I would just keep going at it until I figured it out without any assistance because that's the kind of person I am I'm stubborn like that I've had to learn to be less stubborn streaming these kind of games Interesting. 
Das ist ein Stepmesser. So Nothing it. like a good convent education for honing your lockpicking skills. Yeah, when it comes to point and clicks, I don't want to spend too long on the same puzzle with you folks. Uh, if it's if it's a puzzle where we can all sort of puzzle it out together in like a word puzzle or a maths puzzle or something like that, then I'll stick at it for a little bit longer and we can all work at it together. But when it's something like this where it's sort of tactile, um if I don't get it too quickly, um, for a room full of junk, just, that was one very sophisticated. I'll just buzz up a guide quickly. This place was definitely fishy, in um, more ways than one. The grass. But to be honest, that's only a, a thing that I've. Um, come to more recently we tried all sorts An to make case. i wondered what that was doing there we, we, we tried all sorts to make the indiana jones playthrough which is one of the first point and clicks i played on stream uh interesting and it was so painful that we just gave up on it <laughs> I really didn't want to pull the fence back up and risk trapping myself in this place. Fair enough. Moving the skiff would only damage it more. So we've got two more puzzles over here, or two more actions over here. And that's okay too. Yeah, exactly. I'm quite pleased that there's only been two point and clicks that we've binned off over the course of the last two and two and two thirds ish now years um one of them was indiana jones because it was just a horrible mess of a game um and the other one was monkey island 4 because it bugged out when we were uh three quarters of the way through the game and i and everyone was just like no it's okay you can stop Guybrush died on his way back to his home planet Let's move on to a different game. Um, I felt so guilty about that for so long. Oh shit, yeah, I forgot about that. I'd literally purged the memory of the Discworld game. Um, actually, no, did we finish that? I think we finished that. Yeah, um... The Discworld game was written by the Monty Python writers, uh, not by Terry Pratchett, and you can tell. <laughs> oh, potentially. I may have played it. Uh, I may have played it to completion off stream at some point. I have not played Discworld Noir on stream yet. It is a game that I own a copy of, uh, but I have yet to actually play it on stream. Perhaps that's something we'll do after the Broken Sword games, if folks are interested. I do know how, how I love my... Uh... ...and Dexter were carved on either side. Now any good convent girl like me knows the old Roman for left, right, left, right. But what did it mean here? Nothing at him. Nothing at him. Nothing at him. Nothing at him. We've clearly got to put something in the, the hole. hole. Was too small even for my little hand. Oh, wrong button. It's a shame you don't get any sort of feedback on 
Um, no the help. items that don't work. Nothing obvious. But there had to be a way to open it. Let me check there's nothing else that we missed on the floor or the walls. Ah, uh, just the exit. Okay. So, in theory... We have all the tools we need to complete this puzzle. I'm going to try this again just in case I didn't put it in the right place. It was that. Okay. Mystery solved. Carton stone cylinder slid into the hole with a satisfying wait, 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 wait. She said that she couldn't fit her hand in that hole, but the stone was bigger than her hand when she was using it to make the print. Well, my mind just melted. Inflammation? <laughs> ah, it's because it's actually a stone that's made of bread, isn't it? I'll let her speak this time. Another click. Another step closer. I made a mistake. The lock reset. Okay. Do we need to hit this smaller mark? Because that is smaller than all of the other marks on him. Left. A satisfying click told me I turned it to the right position. It felt like tumblers in a safe. Wait, I know. Rolling out the painted cylinder had given me a print of a secret message. It read, Subjudice. Below it was a sequence of letters. S-D-S-S-D-S-S. -S -S -S. Yeah, there we go. And I can just read that on the little icon there. So that's left, right... Left, left, right, left, left. Another click, another step closer. Opening safe's a lot, is she? A little bit, yeah. I love the sound of locks clicking open. <laughs> Are you sure you're a journalist? Not a cat burglar. Is this not what journalists are supposed to do? What, breaking and entering? <laughs> Explorative journalism. Ut lex vel ut nex sumitu. To the law or unto death, submit. I guess these people didn't believe in liberté, égalité, or fraternity. Yes, I'll admit it. I was a swat at school. I also wore lipstick and the nuns never knew. Show off. <laughs> the lowest lane brand of journalism, a little bit, yeah. Anything else we can look at in here? So this is this is the um, this is the two thousand AD um, brand of policing on display, right? You either submit to the law or you submit to death. So what school of journalism do you subscribe to? Red Team? Bravo, Modhale. <laughs> Guilty until proven innocent. Yes. Oh my god, the slab came down with a hell of a force. Well, she's clearly not Indiana Jones.
Yeah. True cyborg. With nothing to hold it up, the cross dropped back down again. If I was going to get a closer look at the panel, I'd have to find a way of keeping the cross up. I was just looking around the room to make sure that she'd got a source of oxygen, because if she like got herself trapped in here and there was no um, free-flowing air, she wouldn't have long. Maybe a day or two? And the air in there must be really fucking stale, because this obviously doesn't get opened up very often. Look at the state of it. But there's a little grate up here, so she'll be alright. We accidentally trap her in this... Uh, Mausoleum? She'll be fine. It was the beautiful elephant my father had carved. The brass case was smooth and perfectly round. Will that hold it up? No. Anything in here we can interact with to hold it up? Perhaps something back outside. Or are we going to have to use the elephant? No. Okay. It's going to be like the, the photograph in Signalis. I'm just going to keep the elephant in my pocket for the entire game. Not for an achievement, because this is a, a pre-achievements game. But uh, just, you know, for the sake of Maybe carrying an elephant around. Would damage it more. Yes, that's exactly what we want. Give me, give me some of the wood from the skiff. I'd wreck the skiff. Not that it was particularly seaworthy anyway. Okay, let's see what's outside. Perhaps there's some rope or um, something fairly sturdy that we can liberate. Like with a British museum. I wasn't leaving um, yet. I had a hunch there was more to help find. it than our quest. The water looks really nice in this game. Things that I really didn't appreciate when I was younger about games development. Um, I'm really, I'm, I'm glad that I get to revisit these games with you folks because it gives me an opportunity to sort of see these games that I loved as a kid uh, from a new perspective and really appreciate some of the craftsmanship that went into them. E except for the Discworld game, in which case it's more like feeling very, very guilty that I ever enjoyed it. <laughs> oh, Odd Hell, thank you very much for the stretch. Oh, oh, oh. Tell that I've not been back on the meds very long because my bones are all crunchy. And thank you for the posture check as well. Yeah, nice and moist. I mean, look at how pretty here. these trees are. Now, as far as I understand it, everything in this game was hand painted. Can we get Kevin Conroy back? We'll trade you, John Cleese. Yeah, that seems like a fair trade. I mean, not really. The the, the value of Kevin Conroy, in my opinion, is much higher. But you know what I mean. See, that water looks so lovely. Mandatory stream of maintenance, audience participation encouraged. And thank you for the hydrate. Uh, yes, uh, audience participation is very heavily encouraged. We need to all look after our meat meckers. It can be difficult sometimes, but it's worth it. Okay. Hmm. Looks like we can pick the stone back up. I removed the stone cylinder. Huh. Well, that seems like a bit of a floor insecurity for that lock. But Batman and the Grey Ghost are united on that. That's that's true. I think Kevin Conroy is worth a John Cleese, a Bojo, and a Rishi at least. It's a tough trade, but I think we can manage without them. Yeah. 
I mean, we'll be devastated, but I think it's a sacrifice that we can, we can make. <laughs> okay. Lifting the cross closed the entrance door and also opened some kind of stone panel. Ingenious. The stone cross was propped up. Now I was getting somewhere. I do kind of love that that um, stone is whatever size it needs to be for the situation. It's like it's its own little piece of L space. I touched the slot. Nothing bad happened, which was good. I've always been attached to my fingers. This slot was designed for something specific. But what? Uh, what have we got? It looks like a cylinder. Shame. We'll try that. The shell case was too wide. That's a no. Ah, it'll be the ticket. No? Thank you. Be nice if we could see it a bit clearer. A round slot precisely carved into the stone. It is round, okay. Oh, what's that? Was a Weird printing doodad in the bottom left. Printing doodad? Hmm. Which printing doodad are we talking about here? The showcase seems too large. Might use the uh, hair grip. The cylinder was doing a fine job of propping up the cross. Hmm. A round slot precisely carved into the stonework. It feels like it should be the cylinder that's currently holding up the cross. Again. It was the beautiful elephant my father had carved. Holy shit buff. It's brutal. Okay, I, uh, I took a look. I took the stone cylinder. It appears there are a 
of different things that can be done here, and only some of them produce the results you need. <laughs> we need to swish the shell casing first. I genuinely would never have thought of that. One end of the showcase. I don't know how I managed to complete this game when I was a kid. <laughs> At all. Okay, so... The showcase had been flattened at one end, forming a serrated edge. Ta-da! So we couldn't use the shell casing to hold the cross up before because it had got nothing to sit in comfortably, I guess. Um, but we could use the cylinder, Get which nice had moist for me, won't you? absolutely nothing. Um, sure, Paul, thank you very much for the hydrate and the posture check and the stretch that I suspect is incoming as well. There we go. Hmm. Ooh, thank you very much. Yeah. Um. <laughs> shrimp check. Yes. This cylinder is doing an awful lot of the, no pun intended, heavy the lifting at the moment. To hold perfectly. Behind the old walls, I could hear some kind of mechanism groaning in July. But whatever had been triggered. Oh, sorry, that's just my joints. We've got a new thing we can interact with here. The nice thing about having not played this in about 20 years is that I cannot remember a fucking thing about it, was too other than that I really enjoyed it. it. <laughs> we needed something thin enough to prise the door open. Something thin enough to prise the door open. Oh no. My headphones are low on battery. That seems unlikely. Um... They're always on charge. Give me a second, folks. Do I still have sound? Who knows? Let's find out. It was the drawing room. I do. Okay. They are plugged in and hopefully charging. Either that or I've accidentally unplugged the charge lead and that's why they've not been charging up. <laughs> I suppose I'll find out soon. Okay, she needed something flat, she said. Use the ticket. Is this one of those, um, like, getting a door open tricks? No, no, it's not. A hidden door. This was getting interesting. Shame the mechanism jammed. I was going to have to find a way to prise it open. Prise it open. Wonder if we can, because we don't need that anymore. I removed the shell case. The cross didn't drop back down. Some kind of mechanism was holding it up. Okay, let's try using the shell case then. Uh, here we go. Okay. Another good use for a shell case. Another secret room. Somebody had something to hide. But was it what I was looking for? Oh, 
It takes a special kind of person to think of this many uses for wow. a shell Through case. The darkness, but I nothing to do with a gun. This was a stateroom. But for what purpose? And how did it tie in with Tranchon? Okay. We don't have a torch. We have no source of light whatsoever. I don't see any light switches. Well, I see bugger all, to be honest with you, but... Uh... Now, in most of these kind of investigation stories, this is the point when she trips over a corpse and ends up embroiled in a second murder mystery. Um... Literally... Like, I don't know if it's just my screen or if it's as dark for you folks, but I've... I can see this chair and a bit of this desk, but I can't see anything else in the background, really. I know there's a rug there. I can sort of see that on the floor, too. Oh, oh, we got something here. Amazing. There the we go. A light switch. The room lit up bright as day. Much better. It was an old circuit breaker, like something from a Frankenstein movie. Oh, makes sense, I guess. What have we got here? That wasn't going to help. A slot Wait, you tell me I can poke a thing, I'll poke it. Door. All I had to do was find something to fit into it. It was like being back in kindergarten. All I needed now was a shape that would fit the slot. That looks suspiciously like the thing that we've been uh, that we've put that um, cylinder in. Let's find out if we can take the cylinder back. Is the cylinder going to be doing some more heavy lifting? Well, bugger. Okay. So that's a no. We know what to do here now, so this is a... A quick shuffle through. Door's already sorted. I removed the shell case. That's my second low battery warning. Need to put it into my third. I'm going to put myself in BRB for a second, folks, while I investigate why my headphones aren't charging up and whilst I fish out my spare set. Uh, now is a great time to grab a snack, grab a drink, have a little potter about, have a little stretch, whatever you need to do. Um, I'll be with you as soon as I can, okay? <laughs> That does not sound like a fun time, Rust. Okay, so I'm using the backup pair. The main pair are on charge um, and having a nice little rest. Uh, I don't know why they haven't charged up overnight. I had them plugged in and everything. 
Oh, actually, no, I think I might know why. I'm going to have to make some cable adjustments. I think. Right, okay. So we pick that back up. Let's go back in here. Uh, the only downside to using my backup pair is that the reason they're the backup pair is because they're broken, so the left um, clamshell doesn't sit on my ear properly anymore because it's covered in Gorilla Tape, which is desperately trying to hold them together. Um, so I can hear myself more clearly while I'm speaking now, and that's really weird. Like, if you're used to being able to hear yourself a certain amount um, as you're speaking, uh, and then you can hear more of you, it's just sort of like, yeah, I don't like that. Hello, Soup. Welcome in. How you doing? There's a masculine urge to start an elder god cult in order not to pay taxes. Which I think is basically what's happening in this game. If I remember rightly. Something like that. The flag tech faded, but their message was still pretty clear. Fascist regalia. A message of hate. We're setting this place on fire when we're done. I wasn't going to find anything in this old desk. It hadn't been used for years. Oh, um, for anyone that's interested in the production of this game, uh, the reason that the Templars feature so heavy heavily in it, the reason they're a major plot point, is because the creator, one of the main creators of the game, had been doing research into the Knights Templars for something else and had basically gone, hmm, this would make for a really interesting point and click adventure game plot. <laughs> and that's how we ended up with Broken Sword. The desks were covered with a layer of dust. No one had worked here for years. I wasn't going to find anything in this old desk. It hadn't been used for years. The flag tag faded, but their message. Okay, no, we've heard that already. We 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 know it's a a fash clubhouse. We don't we don't need to hear that again. You've discussed it as once already. Planning out some Inside kind of Cthulhu cult lead mask names, idea. Written I thought, in some kind of school mask with finger bones in place of the tentacle. Oh, that'd be really cool, Cyborg. I like that. Ooh, look! A cipher puzzle. This note has been written using a substitution cipher. This means that a different symbol has been used to represent each letter of the alphabet. Is it any wonder that I was so into ciphers when I got a little bit older, when I was playing games like this, where they're just like, yes, this is a substitution cipher, have fun! Um, <laughs> to crack the codes, you must correctly match all the symbols to their corresponding letters. Highlight a symbol, then highlight the corresponding letter. To misquote a certain python, smashes Lavash, yes. <laughs> the gateway drug, yes. This was the gateway drug to my obsession with codes and ciphers. To make a mistake, click on the go back button to step back. Or you can reset the whole puzzle by clicking on the reset button. Helpful. I wonder if this was made into a font. I think it was actually, Martel. I think you can get something that is basically this font on thefont.com. Okay, so the trick to solving these kind of ciphers when you've got no information to go on other than the um, symbols at hand is to look for commonly used words. So this is how they actually broke um, the Enigma code as well. Um, they found the recurring pattern 
within uh, German communications, which was, I think it was their motto or something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head exactly what the words were, but when somebody noticed that, they were able to use that to help them pinpoint exactly what um, the different substitutions were. Um, and that is the easiest way to solve these kinds of ciphers. So you're looking for words like and, the, um, very commonly used letters. That's what they fed into the computers. Yes, exactly, Tabby. Um, I've actually seen um, like a, a little Enigma machine. It is cool, like in person. That was a that was a very fun day. Actually, um, in Edinburgh <laughs> as well, so I can go and look at it whenever I like, basically. Okay, so we've got a couple of two-letter words knocking about. So we're looking at the two letters and the three letters. I think the Germans ended all of their messages with hail insert a fascist leader here. It was something like that. Yeah. Okay. So. This is interesting here. We've got a two letter word and then a three-letter word directly beneath it that has the same first two letters. Hello Rocket, welcome in, how you doing? So it could be that this is T and that's O, because then we could have two and two. Um, and I think what else it could be. Is an is? No, that's not likely. Uh, let's let's see how this puzzle plays out in terms of what happens when we press the the symbols and stuff. Uh, and let's go on the initial assumption that that is the letter T. Okay, so it changes the symbols into letters for us. That's nice. That's going to make this a lot easier. And now that we can see where those T's are sitting, we can take a look at what's next to them. Okay, so we've got quite a few instances of this symbol next to the T. Welcome back, Ian. How you doing? Doing okay? Feeling the after effects of Grandma's lunch in a good way or a bad way, Rocket. I'm hoping in a good way. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say yes. It feels very much like this is likely to be an O. Let's see what that looks like. Elaborate order of burgers and chips. It is indeed. Had a shower. Lovely. Love a good shower. It's an encouraging thought that the fash through their own obsessions will inevitably dig their own graves. Indeed. Indeed. Now, if anybody spots something that might be a more likely candidate for a letter, do let me know. Because the one problem with puzzles like this is if you are thinking about them too hard, you can miss simple things. One of the reasons that there were so many people working on the Enigma cracking um, at Bletchley Park is because many hands make light work in that regard. She reads that again. Um, I want to say yes, but I haven't actually read any Sutter sort of Kane. Because I think there are actually Sutter sort of Kane books, aren't there? You can read books written by the Sutter sort of Kane. Um, hello, Lynn. Welcome in. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that, sweetheart. I hope it heals up nicely and quickly. Yeah, um, Sutter Kane is on the list, Cyborg, but uh, I haven't found much time for books 
recently. I did have another thought that that could be a and then you'd have as and ass but I don't think it's going to have ass. The word third from the bottom line. This one. Very likely if that t is correct that could be that. So let's have a look at where this n symbol is turning up. O T H makes sense. TH something. S isn't the only letter that can repeat after an A. No, it's not. Um, we can have words like add, all, um, but finding one that is both a, a two-letter word and a three-letter word is more the issue there. I think that looks like a squiggly N, fourth from the right, bottom row. Probably an I or an A. This one. Yeah, I was thinking it was probably A. So let's see what this looks like. We've got, if this is an A, then that would be at. And we've got OA there, which wouldn't make any sense really. I think it's an I. Oh, could be. Yeah. Which would make that S more than likely. Let's have a look. We're, we're, we're putting a lot on the T being correct. The lambda looking one, very left bottom row. Has to be N. Second line word beginning with TH and the following word are most likely this and is. Mm. That's what I was thinking. Uh, this could be uh, a B and a U. Let's see how often they occur. We want a little um, loop. Yeah, that would make sense because if that's B and U, we've got but there and we've got both here. So we'll say that and we'll have... Let's have a look at this one. How often does this turn up? Oh, this one turns up um, surprisingly often, um, but we've only got two words that we are currently able to spell out with it. Shout out to Lupin Gifts on Twitter for all your queer shipping needs. Awesome, thank you, Rocket. Uh, so we've got but and we've got us, which makes sense so far. So let's go on the assumption that that's a U. But this is two. Okay, so we've got the beginning of a, a, a good sentence there for definite. Fifth line, not A. Urgent, yeah, that could definitely be urgent. That would make a lot of sense. Okay, let's have a look at some of those symbols then. I'm I'm loving cracking this code with you folks. I I feel like we're there in Bletchley. This is great. But this is too urgent to wait. Yes, that would make a lot of sense. That would make a lot of sense. Okay, so let's take a look at this one here. Ooh, that's interesting. If that's an R, I can't, off the top of my head, think of um, any words that have two R's next to each other and have the same letter on either side of the R's. 
So that might be an interesting one. We'll keep an eye on that. Maybe it's a name. It could be. Could very definitely be a name. I mean, it's the very beginning of the message as well. So that would be a, a place to find. Which one is the inchworm, Mod Hale? I mean, they all look relatively wormy. <laughs> Top left in the symbol index. Ah, I see. This one's an E, is it? I'm pretty sure I clicked on the E there. You can you can see my uh, you can you can see my uh, mouse pointer over the E. Okay. Inchworm. E. There we go. Which means that's a P. It is a name. You're right, Lynn. It's Pierre. Pierre. Okay. And then this one, which looks an awful lot like a, a particular uh, symbol in Japanese, is the letter M. Okay. Pierre. Something. Report to something. But this is too urgent to, and we think this is probably wait, which makes sense. So let's get those two in. Arno, uh, that's probably a D. Arno and somebody both dead. This is not a... That'll be coincidence because that's the same letter three times in that word and the only thing it could be is coincidence. So this is C. And everything's falling into place quite nicely now. The leaf is an M. Uh, the leaf. The leaf, leaf. Ah, this one. That could be a Y. It could be Yamada. Because just because we're in France doesn't mean there aren't folks with Japanese names here. So we'll keep an eye on that. And we haven't used the Y yet. Uh, the zero is, or, or the stop sign as Kian's just called it, is definitely a K. Because that's take great care. This last, this symbol here is going to be the last one we figure out, I think. Backward C is an F. Full report. That'll be full report, but it's... There we go. Yeah, full report to follow, but this is too urgent to wait. Arno and somebody both dead. This is not a coincidence. Indeed, it seems that all of us who came together in something are in danger. Take great care, last symbol. Okay. So let's... I think you might be a little bit behind uh, Torpor, you might want to refresh. Oh, in July, yes. Good spot, Kian and Wheezy. That would make sense. That would make a lot of sense. And that does mean that that name is Yamada. So, pop that in. So, our options. Yep, I was too slow typing. No worries. We, we've made fantastic progress as a team. And there's only, what? 20 of us, according to stream elements. 
zero clues as to what the dotted S is. Yeah. It could be Q, V, X or Z. My brain's going Quentin. Let's try Q. It could be a kiss. It could very definitely be a kiss. I have decrypted the note. It is a it kiss. Is, yes. <laughs> Full report to follow. Or but just an X. Is too urgent could to be Xavier? Arno and Yamada both dead. Xander? This is not a coincidence. Indeed, it seems that all of us who came together in July are in danger. Take great care. X. Yeah, could be could be short Xavier. Still might be initial, yeah. We're gonna assume that it's a kiss though. Kisses. Everybody's dead. I'm scared. Kisses. <laughs> How does she know she's cracked it with X and not Q or Z? I don't know. She, this last makes a, a, a lot of... She, she jumps to a lot of conclusions. She must have extremely strong legs. Um, it was pretty clear from the lack of dust that someone had been working very recently at this desk. Hey, look at that. It looks like someone's oh watching us. God. The sheet was a printout with my personal information. Everything from well, that's my a GDPR breach. to my waist size. They were right about chocolate. But come on, guys. I'm a size 10. There was even a picture of me taken with a <laughs> telephoto lens. Carchon wouldn't have taken these pictures himself. This was big. And organized. I was part of it. And people were getting murdered. My seven years of French have taught me nothing. <laughs> This was the article I'd written about the costume killer. My suspicions were right. Conchon had cut it out. Two businessmen had been killed. One in Italy, one in Japan. In each case, the killer had worn a costume. A penguin and then a snowman. But that wasn't the only link between the two murders. Both the victims had been big media do-gooders. And I proved they were just the opposite. So, how did they fit in with Conchon? There we go. Arno and Yamada. Yeah, exactly. So she's going around airing people's dirty laundry and now they're getting killed by a mime. Are we the mime? Are we the baddie? We've got black and white stripes on our shirt. Gotta watch for those killer penguins. <laughs> Okay, so we've just looked at that. I don't think there's anything we can interact with other than the documents we've already interacted with. Oh, we can look at the, the coffee cup. The dregs at the bottom of the mug hadn't dried out or gone mouldy. It wasn't more than a day old. No luck catching them penguins, then. It's just one penguin, actually. The anti-mime, they shout everything they're doing and use real props. <laughs> ah, yes, a point-and-click protagonist. A method actor. <laughs> oh, just knacker in antique desks. Don't you now. just hate it when that happens? Yeah, it happens to me with a dishwasher, actually. A photo, long lost, had fallen down the back of the drawer. It was very old, but there was no mistaking the guy in the foreground. Cachon. Behind him were soldiers. A burning village and a corpse. The photograph was cropped on the right-hand side. Somebody else in the picture obviously didn't want to be in it anymore. I wasn't surprised. This was Africa in the 60s. An uprising was being brutally suppressed. And here was Mr. Media himself. Carchon. Doing the suppressing. The photograph was not just powerful evidence. It was also my ticket. 
to one explosive story. I had enough for a story. An amazing story that was going to make my reputation and blow Conchance to pieces. Oh wait, yeah, France colonies, yeah. get home fast and start typing. <laughs> wait, she refused to pull a bit of wood off of her scrapped boat but perfectly willing to smash the shit out of an antique desk, yeah. Fucking journalist. Nico, it's Ronnie. Hey, Ronnie, you cracked open the champagne here. Are you crazy? What's funny? Wait a minute. You didn't print it, did you? Of course I didn't print. That's the best piece I've written. The last, as far as I'm concerned. It's important. Oh, she fired. It's suicidal. You can't destroy a national hero. He deserved it. His corpse isn't even cold. Ronnie, two hours ago I told you what I'd found. You loved it. You begged me to write it up immediately. Two hours is a long time in newspapers, Nico. Someone's got to you, haven't they? Listen up, Nicole, and listen good. Pierre Carchon had a lot of friends, powerful friends. For your own sake. Forget what happened. You got it. End of conversation. Good night. And that's I how I lost my, my job. <laughs> I knew there was nowhere else to sell the story. If Ronnie wouldn't print it, nobody would. Anything I learned from doing GCSE French was that the system doesn't always work. The guy next to me got pulled up by the teacher in our first class fact and very bored with the basic French we were being taught. Then responded to the Bonsoir, teacher in perfect Bonsoir. French saying Bonsoir, this was a waste Bonsoir. of both their time. Growing up in a bilingual household and spent time between UK story. and France. Your Pierre Carchon Oof. story. How did you know about that? There are people out there, madame, who will be very upset by this story. Oh, really? Well, it's their lucky day. It's been <coughs> spiked. Yes, I know. We must meet. We must? I have information relating to your costume killer stories. Tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., Café de la Chandelle Verte, Rue Alaincourt. I shall be wearing a grey overcoat. You must talk to no one about this. You can't tell me what to... Tomorrow at 8. I'll be waiting. People so complain he about have newspaper guessed. articles all the time, but not usually before they're printed. I was beginning to feel scared. This guy, Plantard, could I trust him? What a douche, him? Should I bit. meet him or forget the whole business? I didn't have an answer. Um, you may have guessed by now the reason that I enjoyed this game so much as a, a kid, and how formative it was on my interest as I got older. I'd only been in Paris for a week, God, the but already so I'd fallen loud. in love with the city. My latest discovery was a little cafe, La Chandelle Verte. I was pretty sure the waitress was taking a shine to me. That old Stobart charm, I guess. Little did I know my reverie was about to be so rudely interrupted. Oh yeah, cholerophobia warning, sorry. I completely forgot. He actually looks almost exactly like the main character from Titan AE. Uh, I was going to make a comment about how inspired by Disney and Don Bluth's As animation up, this game actually really is. Angry. One minute I'm on vacation, the that next guy really brought the house down. Blown me up. I knew right away what I was going to do. I was going to find that clown and bring him to justice. Because justice matters. Justice is up there with liberty and equality. And, Are you serious? Uh, fraternity, after all. That's why I'd studied law, wasn't it? Well, that and the money, of course. So now we come to the original game opening. You can tell from the change in art style. Yes. So we're playing the director's cut, which is basically the only version of the game that you can uh, get um, on Steam, if I'm not mistaken, uh, which has additional content that wasn't available in the original 1996 version of the game. We are now into the bit of the game that is the original 1996 version. <laughs> Seen this game before at least a bit of it yeah it, it's actually a very very popular point and click um when i looked uh on twitch last night when i was setting stuff up it looked very much like um people aren't really playing it on twitch at the moment but it's it's got a bit of a cult following it's a, a well-known game for point and click fans 
this is the one with the goat puzzle, but didn't they change it with the re-release? I have never played the director's cut before, Soup. Um, I played the original version of the game uh, when I was about 11. <laughs> My mum used to really like this series up until the third game. Yeah, I've played the first two and I think I played a bit of the third one but I never played the rest of them. Uh, we are going to play the rest of them and see why it is that people feel that way, because your mum is not on her own. <laughs> um, I seem to remember this game had a GBA adaptation as well. I recognise this crossing. Yeah, it, it got quite a few ports. Like The, the version I played was... Um, there was a, a company that did, air quotes, remasters of computer games and released them with a smaller version of the original box art uh, and their logo and shit around it in a like a plastic jewel case um, and they did this they did um, oh thank you for the treat for chibi Uh they did Soul Reaver 2 I have the Soul Reaver 2 director's cut somewhere as well and uh a bunch of other stuff as well. Oh, thank you for the treat for me as well, Kian. Much appreciated. Um, but yeah, that was the last time I played this game was back in the early 2000s and it was not the director's cut version. Uh, oh, I was going to say the treat for me is a very small gummy alligator, but it's actually an ice cream cone. Uh, thank you very much. And thank you for the treat for poor Sosh too. Oh my god. I've just looked at how he's laying on his bed. He's like proper lounging on it like he's Cleopatra or something. I threw that treat directly at your face. How did you miss it? We're all on the ball here today, can you tell? Oh shit, I forgot to medicate. Hey, pal, remember to take your meds. That's for everybody else who may have forgotten to take their meds today, like I just did. Draw him like one of those French investigative journalists. He does sort of have that look about him, actually, doesn't he? The leading article referred to the visit of a Nobel Prize winner from some unpronounceable Eastern European state. Big mood, Mortel. The big story was about the brutal murder of a French media magnate, shot down in cold blood. The guy oozed confidence, Ooh. like a regular French statesman. Did you hear that, folks? That was two separate bits of audio that were recorded in uh, nice and moist for me, different you? studios by the sounds of things, because one of them was really far away and the other one was not. <laughs> And with more tinny as well. Thank you for the hydrate, Kian. The column was devoted exclusively Hello, to Cole. Gossip How you doing? And sensationalism. The leading article referred to the visit of a Nobel Prize oh, winner. No, we've already heard that. I thought it might be for this here rather than that there, but never mind. The column was devoted exclusively. No. That's all gossip. I noticed the writing at the foot of the page. It read Salah Eddin, 1345. <laughs> I forgot Longfang recorded sound commands. That was a shock. We don't get to use the Longfang sound commands very often because you folks are very well behaved. Um, normally it's me that forgets their meds and um, nobody posts spoilers in chat because you're good beans and you read the rules and follow them. Um, and I appreciate that you do that. Sound quality hadn't caught up in the US yet. Oi, no fucking spoilers. Thank you, Modell. <laughs> I considered straightening the table, but I figured it best not to disturb the evidence. I don't post spoilers because I never know the game. Wahahaha. Hey. That works, Cole. 
I do like to try and show you folks games that you might not have seen or heard of before, or um, especially for some of the folks that are more my age and up, that you might not have played in a long, long time, so that I can give you that little shot of nostalgia, but also bring new people into the fold of games that are um, fun to play. Got to showcase the big Scots there, indeed. Oh, she doesn't look very happy. We did just sort of let a clown destroy her store, her, her cafe. So. Yeah. Let's, let's check out. I, I don't feel emotionally prepared to speak to her yet. A pair of brew, indeed. Okay, we've got this guy over here that we're going to have to go talk to. Let's just have a... Did we actually interact with that? I considered straightening the table, but I figured it best not to disturb the evidence. Oh, we did. As a, a counterpoint to the last we were playing as before, he's like, hmm, I probably shouldn't fuck about with the evidence. She's like, oh, I'm going to fuck about with the evidence. Oh, I should put the evidence back the way I found it. Much more sensible about preserving the crime scene, this one. He can stay. Okay. So there's very little over here. We could go after the... villain. But he's the not here. Fled into this alley, but there was no sign of him now. Exploded by Clowns sounds like a great band name. Or a documentary on the decline of the Tory party. <laughs> Bravo, Modder Hill. <laughs> that was fucking great. Well done. That poor cat. Oh yeah, this game has the occasional jump scare. Kitty. Yeah. Like that was gonna work. I took a deep breath and prepared to climb the drain pipe. I guess the clown <laughs> hadn't escaped over the rooftops. <laughs> I took a deep breath and prepared to destroy the drain pipe. For legal reasons, this is a non-actionable threat, indeed. It smelled like someone had dumped a truckload of fish in a locker room on a hot summer afternoon. Ugh. It's a very specific smell. Let's check this bin again now that there's not a cat in it. I'd had it with sticking my nose into French trash cans. Fair enough. Mmm. Bisto. <laughs> okay. So. We've got the sewer grate here. Narrator. It was him. He was that guy. Let's not be disappearing into the sewers just yet. Let, let's go and... face up to what I has happened drink, but I hated the taste of brandy uncultured swine I needed a stiff drink he's not gonna pick it up is I he? hated no. the taste of brandy boo refusing to pick up booze the sight of the dead guy's staring eyes turned my knees to jelly I tried not to meet his stare as I searched the dead man's pockets oh and now we're back to tampering with the evidence credit cards the guy's past was a blank page. Really, it's a miracle there's any of him left. Oh my head. You never appear. He looks completely different here to how he looks in the cutscenes and in the game George itself. George Stobart, ma'am. You look like you could use a little help. I could use a little drink. I feel sick, dizzy. 
He broke. And now his fingerprints are on the body. Remember the party. Yep. Just relax and take it easy. You've been knocked out. You don't say. What happened? There's been an explosion. You should try not to move. Are you a doctor? Okay, is it echoey or is that my headphones? Because I'm using the loner pair, as it were. Okay, no, it is echoey. No, they put sound recording studios at the bottom of caverns in a metal can. Yeah, it is very... Um... <laughs> they call me CSI Nurgle because I'm contaminating the crime scene. I love it. Well done, Modell. <laughs> Lady has an echo. Yeah, that that's... Okay, on the plus side, that means it's not OBS shitting itself. This is nice. We like this. Um, sound issues! It's the game. Um, it must be the director's cut, because I know it wasn't echoey and tinny in the original version of the game. It must be something to do with the Steam version. There are a lot of known bugs with the Steam version of this game. Which is... Something that can be said about a lot of earlier point and clicks, actually. Like, you can buy them on the Steam store, but they don't work quite right. For a lady who was in the same area of a powerful explosion, she, she tanked it like a champ. She really did. Like, yeah, she got knocked out for a little bit, but she still got all of her limbs and stuff. She's doing a lot better than this guy. Okay, do we want to be evil or do we want to be good? Are we going Paragon or Renegade, folks? Plot armor is one hell of a drug. It really is. Her, uh, her little chef's apron is uh, made of fuck offium, as my friend likes to say. Paragon, don't want to hurt the NPC's feelings. Good. No, but I used to play hospitals when I was a kid. Can you remember anything at all? No. I need a drink. Pour me a brandy. Okie dokie. Just give me the bottle with a cheat on it. I guess a little drop won't hurt. <laughs> frowny face. <laughs> that was a that was a frowny face and a half. You know, in those um <sighs> That's better. She knocked back the brandy as if it was water. I was glad I wasn't picking up the check. That was a lot of brandy to just hey, obliterate. Wake up. She didn't respond. If I wanted another cappuccino, I'd have to serve myself. I like how that's his problem with this. Games promote violence. I don't want to hurt the NPC's feelings. Yeah, I'm very much the same in that regard. Okay, so we searched the body. We gave the waitress enough brandy to apparently knock her out which is probably not a smart idea she's probably got a concussion um oh well he's seriously trying to get a coffee in this mess yes yes he is the mirror is just sleep it off pieces bad luck for someone Poor guy. He was pretty mashed up. A lot less mashed up than you'd expect from a, an explosion like that. I have a newspaper in my pocket and that's it. Uh, and there's nothing else I can interact with. We've already looked at that. Yeah, there's just nothing else to interact with. Uh, out we go. I checked his pockets. Just in no. case we're now supposed to find something, but it seems not. Actually, the mirror let's try something. Thousand pieces. Bad luck for someone. Poor guy. He was pretty mashed up. That seems to be a no. He was pretty mashed. That's a no. Okay. So I think we've done everything we can in here. We've caused enough damage and destruction for one day. Let's go this way and talk to this guy. 
He seems to be fairly diligently working, considering an explosion just went off nearby. Please, hold it right there. Whoa, don't shoot. I'm innocent. I'm an American. Can't make up your mind, huh? I demand this to the American <laughs> consul. Drop your weapons and get down on the ground. <laughs> Put that thing away, Thousand Moo. I apologize, Sorry. You, but I cannot permit you to leave. <laughs> that line Am gets me every rat? time. Ah, uh, no, I would simply like to ask you some questions. En avant, to the cafe, march. What a mess. This bombing is an outrage, is it not? Stop that, monsieur. Has it occurred to you? Ah, yes, Detective Ming T. Merciless. Oh, Just look a little bit like uh, Ming Merciless. I prefer Merciless, to anyway. look on the bright side. Besides, I recall a case where the killer escaped by feigning death. However, in this case, the man is quite dead. <laughs> Examine the girl and take her statement if you can. Et maintenant, to business. Your name, please? George Stobart. I'm from California. And what brings you to Paris, Monsieur Of the California Stobart. Stobarts. Travel. I'm touring Europe. You chose well. The city is Hey, you. Stop being dead. I'm up here, no? Uh, yeah. I guess so. Apart from the bomb blasts. Were you in the vicinity of the cafe at the time of the explosion? Yeah, I was sitting out on the sidewalk. I was lucky I wasn't killed. The inspector passed over my remark with no reaction. Oh god, we're not just American, we're from California. <laughs> uh Yes, I did. Was he alone? Uh yeah. And did he say anything to you? No. He was more interested in the waitress. Did you see anyone else in the cafe? Nope. Or, yes, a very suspicious-looking clown. Yeah, there was a guy dressed as a clown. He was carrying an accordion. An accordion? Bon. The picture is forming in my mind. You sat right next and to a bomb blast, next to a window. It is not is bleeding. All right, move. Uh, not bleeding out fast. She <laughs> Shit. If she Sugar goose. Yeah, exactly. Over, she doesn't remember seeing a no, clown. Not even a gla any, any glass all damage. All it's really quite impressive. Me, the skill. Who am I to believe? I wonder. Eh bien, a lot of I ha -ha -ha energy, yeah. I am satisfied There's a lot of that in this game. You may leave. I hope this little incident does not spoil the rest of your vacation. What about my personal It's not an accordion, but a boombox. Can you at least give me some advice? <laughs> what can I say? Stay alert and look out for suspicious characters. And don't cross the road until the little man shows green. Great advice. I honestly believe you are in no danger, monsieur. Should you remember anything of importance, please contact me. My card. <laughs> it's nice to see the LOLO cast got work once the series ended. <laughs> Thanks, that is all. You may go. <laughs> Bravo, Weezy. Go on, on the surface, no. But what lurks inside the subconscious? If the door can only be opened. Are you serious, monsieur? I thought your interest in psychic detection was purely academic. I think the developers may have watched the Pink Panther before recording these lines, yeah. Oh, look! There's a familiar body. He's just wandering around, taking pictures, completely ignoring us. Let's talk to him. Sergeant Moo? Ah, Monsieur Stobart. <laughs> Inspector Wee Wee Freud over there. Yeah. The retention of such data is part of my duty as a gendarme. That is our crime it's fought through attention to detail, not intuition. Yes, yeah, sure. I mean, it could be both. I was one of the last people to see the victim alive, Sergeant. Does that worry you? Yes, it does. I feel Damn it, I can't steal the evidence if the cops are here. To find his killer. That is best left to the authorities, through. monsieur. Oh dear. Did he speak to you? Tell you anything? No, he just grinned and nodded. Don't let it trouble you, monsieur. Go home and try to forget. Try to forget the crippling trauma of being caught in a bomb blast. Thanks, officer. That's very helpful. 
What is Russell doing with that girl? He is giving her the once over, as you Americans say. Once he gets his teeth into a kiss, <laughs> nothing will shake him off. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I just want to draw your attention, folks, to the way in which um, George's character portrait has changed there. He's just like, oh, really? <laughs> in public? Are you sure that's wise? Wow. The French are bold, aren't they? <laughs> look, look at his eyebrows. If they got any higher, they'd be in the atmosphere. Look, Sergeant, the inspector gave me his card. <laughs> he wants you to advise him. If I you shall have put any it on the fridge. Concerning this case. <laughs> well, I'd be glad to talk with him. But I don't want him working his psycho weirdness on me. Ah, no, monsieur. You're confusing the science of parapsychology with witchcraft. Oh, yeah? What's the difference? We don't do sacrifices. I mean, it really depends on the kind of witchcraft. Go on, then. I found this in the street, Sergeant. Uh, that, monsieur, is a newspaper. No? There's a note written on it. Sala Edin, 1345. Aha! That stumped you, hasn't it? I have never been... And the kind of parapsychology, in indeed. ...in my life, monsieur. It is the name assumed by the clown, no? Sala Edin, the clown? I don't think so. So, we're looking for a mime and a clown. Is a magician the next killer? Potentially sinister. Parapsychology something from Sherlock Holmes. Uh, I believe it is, actually, yeah. See you later, Sergeant. Okay, she's wandering around. I should probably speak to her. Excuse me, mademoiselle? May maybe just, like, go over to her and say excuse Hi. me instead of shouting uh, it from across the George street. Stobart. Oi, hmm? French An lady. American, by the sound of it. Yep, that's right. On vacation in Paris. <laughs> Some vacation, huh? You were here when the bomb went off? Sure was. Sat right out in front of the cafe. Did you notice a middle-aged man, maybe 60, with a hat and overcoat? I couldn't believe it. She didn't even ask how <laughs> Excuse me, lady! Yeah, yeah a little bit. <laughs> the bomb exploded. You weren't related to him, were you? Oh, no, nothing like that. I'm Nicole Collard. It's the most enunciated spelling uh, of Saladin uh, I have club? ever seen oh, no, in text. But also kind of necessary it? given all the military historians I've heard say Shame. salad in. You could interview yeah. me about the bombing. An eyewitness account. Minutes after the outrage that shook the whole of Paris. You know, real life drama, human interest, that kind of stuff. I'll just stick to the facts, thank you. Did you see who planted the bomb? I know it sounds crazy, but he was dressed like I a mean, clown. I mean, look at what the captions did there. They turned Salad Inn into Saladin. Okay. Who was the guy you were supposed to meet? His name was Poincaré. I didn't know him, but he called me last night. He said he had a story which would interest me. He asked me to meet him at the cafe. I guess I'll never know what he wanted to do. <laughs> That's really walking well, about telling everyone he can see that he was a witness to a murder. <laughs> yeah. Like, he's, he's just, like... He may as well put a sign on his back, and fuck, on his front as well, that says, assassinate me. You know? How did Plantard get your name? Through the newspaper, La Liberté, I'd written an article linking two unsolved murders, one in Italy, the other in Japan. The cases were remarkably similar. A wealthy victim, no apparent motive, and a costume killer. Plantard said he could supply me with more information. Somehow the clown must have known about our appointment. Get nice and moist for me, won't you? Topple, thank you very much for the hydrate. And the posture check. And the stretch that's incoming. Thank you very much. Mm. Viewer participation, as always, is advised. Don't forget to take good care of your meat meckers, everybody. Well, you don't do a killing in regular clothes. I've also heard it pronounced Salahadin. Don't know if that's accurate or not. I don't wanna. 
I'm not forcing you. Advising, not forcing. <laughs> hey, I just met you and this is crazy. I've been a witness to a bombing, baby. Beautiful. Beautiful. Love it. Do you know a police officer called Rosso? Rosso? Our paths have a knack of crossing. If I didn't know better, I'd say it was deliberate. Are you seeing Rosso? Is he here? And he's inside, attempting to question a witness with his psychic powers. That guy is weird. Yeah. Have you met the clown before? It's a long story. I have plenty of time. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shot down. That, that needs the opening to you give love a bad name on top of it, doesn't it? I have plenty of time. I don't. He's dead. By God, she tore him in half. Fatality. Yeah. She's not entertaining his shit at all. Why do, you about the clown? Why do you want to get involved? Because he almost killed me. Isn't that reason enough? I guess so. Listen, <laughs> I'll give you my phone number. <laughs> She's so Can fucking dismissive. I'll my story and I'll let you in on what I know. And let's get one thing straight right now. This is strictly business. Okay. Uh, it's a deal. I have to go develop these pictures. I'll be on phone with you. Uh, fine. Uh, I'll see you soon. That felt very much like, okay, it's a deal, until I completely forget this conversation. Oh my god. What's that? Oh my god, it's Nicole with a steel chair. Yeah. <laughs> the cover was too heavy and awkward to lift with my bare hands. Okay. We we have a newspaper and um the detective's card. Neither of those is going to help us lift that sewer grate. This is strictly business. A likely story, 90s writers, yeah. This is strictly business. The writer's going, for now. <coughs> Stop that! Get away he needs from to there. get on the juice. Oh, sorry. What do you think you're doing? I was admiring your toolbox. Are we? Well, hey. Good luck, have you? I'm warning you, if you touch it, I'll crack your nuts. Okay, I get your point. Well. Hey, you. I thought you'd been arrested. No, it was a misunderstanding. When he pulled that gun, gah, I thought that was it. Those automatics pack quite a punch, you know? He made a mistake. He Never heard a of a Parisian from New you, York before. A terrorist? Ha! He was only doing his duty, I guess. Whoa, old timer buys a drink before the third day. I know, right? <laughs> Did you see an old guy with a briefcase? Wait, silly old coot. Do you know what he said to me? Work fascinates me, he said. I could watch it all day. Quel vite. I could have knocked his block off. Did you recognize the old man? No. Should I have done? Was he a celebrity? No, but I guess he is now. Hey, just we walk in here. What? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. That's too bad. Now I wish I hadn't called him what I did. If only I could turn back the clock. If only I'd been more tolerant. Regret and remorse are strange emotions. They really bring out the hammiest actors in people. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see a clown come by this way? A clown? Like, in a circus? Yeah, with makeup and a big red nose. Oh, oh pizza those baguette. Those guys are funny, aren't they? Not in my experience. I, I know you're I the circus, following on from Mod Hale's joke, it. but you haven't a pizza question. baguette sounds like an amazing idea right now. You think I've got time to watch everyone who passes by? Some of us have to work for a living. <laughs> yeah. Chorus or something. Look, I, I mean, he probably works for a living when he's not on holiday, right? Clowns. I told you already. He does one too. I didn't yeah. see a thing. 
He was wearing multicolored baggy trousers and makeup. He'd be a poor sort of clown if he didn't. <laughs> Hello there, sassy French workman. <laughs> French bread pizzas are the best thing invented, and I hate they're never in stock. Yeah. Funnily enough, when I was younger, I used to go and stay at my grandma's in Yorkshire in the summer, and um, they didn't get, like, Chicago town pizzas and stuff like that in their local frozen food shop, but what they got instead was, like, a knockoff version of Chicago town frozen pizzas that was on little baguettes. So I used to get a lot of microwave baguette pizzas in the summer. And I loved them. Delicious. Kind of miss them, actually. Listen, I have to find that clown. He's a killer. He's hey, a killer clown. Who are you, anyhow? A cop from no, France. No, of course not. I mean, do I look like a cop? No, but you act like one. Sticking your nose in where it's not wanted. How do you know this guy's a killer? Did you see him in action? Didn't you hear the explosion? The cafe was blown up. I wondered what not that out of space. was. No. <laughs> I'm glad you got what, what I was going for there. Yeah, an old man was killed. Merde. I didn't think it was that serious. What about the waitress? Oh, she's fine. Thank the saints. There's naan breads. Oh, yes. You can also make uh, really nice, air quote, pizzas with tortillas. I do that a lot. And really nice garlic bread too. If you get two um, flour tortillas and you gently heat them with um, grated cheese and garlic puree and some herbs in between them and then a little bit of cheese on the top as well and you put that in under the grill for a little bit Fucking glorious tortilla cheesy garlic bread. So fucking good. So good. Also, I love that uh, sassy French workman said a cab. What's in the toolbox? What's in the toolbox? As if you didn't know. What's the big deal about tools, anyhow? They're cool. Tools are civilization. You don't say. That's right. Tools are what distinguish us from other animals. Who are you calling an animal? I've met your sword before, looking down your nose at me because I'm working class, huh? I have a good mind to knock your block off. I think he just really wants to use that pickaxe on a person and we happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> what kind of tools do you keep in your box? Huh? You really are interested in tools? Sure, like I said, mm. tools are uh, civilization. So you keep saying. So are you gonna show them to me? I'm like, why you? Dude, you can't just oh, ask somebody on. to just a little show you their I toolbox. To they have to offer I'm that willingly. <laughs> Sassy worker is more aggressive than my Tinder dates. I gotta go. Don't let me keep you. He's so angry. Go on, get your tool Second out for me. Huge gate was a smaller access door. Honestly. The door was securely locked. Oh yeah. Okay. So we can't go any further that way, it won't let us. I examined the jagged glass remaining in the window. It was broken, all right. Continually surprised at how socially aware this game is for the time when it was written. We find that with a lot of early point and clicks, though, don't we? Like, if you look at the Sam and Max stuff that came out in the early 2000s, it's super aware of how things are going um, or how they will go. Um, Monkey Island has a lot of prophetic stuff in it. And they are all very, very socially aware, very... They're very well thought out in a way that I don't think a lot of games these days can say they are very conscious. A lot's gone into them. And a lot goes into modern games as well. I'm not saying otherwise, but I don't know. 
maybe it's just more surprising for these earlier games because the internet was less prevalent at the time. I know the identity of the dead guy. His name was Prantow. Is that so? You knew him, did you? No, but we'll know everything there is to know about him. <laughs> Seen as you asked nicely, pulls out two for long talk, Grinch. The best way you can help us is to go home, monsieur. Okay. See you later, I know when I'm not wanted. I examined the jagged glass remaining in the window. It was broken, all right. <laughs> really? You don't say. What happens if I, I try and move this now he's there? Table, oh, but I think it best not to disturb the evidence. Yeah, that's fair, Cole. I feel like I've missed something. Oh, I have missed something because I've done it with the for want of a better description, beat cop. But I didn't do it with him. Hi, can you spare a few minutes? What do you want? Big studio now? stuff was mostly sterilized spectacle. Yeah, that's very very true. We haven't actually exhausted all of the options with him yet. Like, I, I went to great effort to exhaust all the options with the cop, and then didn't with this guy. Do you have let's a tool do that. for lifting manhole covers? As it happens, I do. Cool. Lend it to me, uh, just for a few minutes. No. Oh, come didn't on. didn't say please. No. Get your own. Let me explain what I'm going to do with your manhole lifting tool. Um... Let me explain what I'm going to do with my peak. <laughs> uh, forget it. I'll come back when you're in a better mood. It doesn't get any better than this. He's just a very angry man. <laughs> wow, though, what a threat. And I think that one was an actionable one, wasn't it? Fucking hell. Would you like to read my newspaper? I haven't got <laughs> Put it on the floor and that. back away Don't slowly. You could read it on your lunch break. Ten minutes is all I get. And if my boss had his way, I wouldn't get that. He'd have me on a drink, so I didn't have to stop to eat. Oh, take the newspaper and quit complaining. Or maybe join a union. Ah, look at this. Damn bleeding hard liberals. Yeah, save the dolphins. Catch them and eat them, I say. All that fuss over a bunch of fish. Nah, that's more like it. Look at the size of those. Like well, he's a delight. No, ah, what this? Sally. Okay, I don't like this. <laughs> it's a racehorse. A horse, a legend. You suffer as reborn, Molly. Oh my God, what hell? That's horrifying. Least believable thing about this game, ten minute break in France. The street workers would have burned that place to the ground. What about your toolbox? Stop it. Help yourself. Can't really imagine a French guy saying stuff it either. Unless he was talking about um food. I'd found just what I wanted. Look at the way he crouches. He's really looking after his back with that. You should never ever bend when you're picking something up. You should actually crouch, for want of a better description. You bend at the knees, not at the spine. My mum taught me that. Probably shouldn't go lifting manholes either. Like uh, manhole covers. Sewer. Right. Geronimo. So careful as well. Like normally in a point and click adventure game, especially these days, they just jump down. But no, that this is being very 
very realistic about the way it does it does stuff. Well, it's not easy to lift a man's hold. Indeed. Yeah, lift with your legs, not with your back. As I picked up the plastic ball, I realized it was intended to be worn. <laughs> Fives. It was the clown's red nose. Well, clown definitely came this way. I scooped up the sodden tissue. It was cold and greasy, like breakfast leftovers. Ew. I took hold of the scrap of material and unsnagged it from the spike. We're just picking up rubbish now. Hi there. Hello. Hold it right there. You, you, you are right. <laughs> I knew you'd come back. And now I've got you. What are you talking about? You're trespassing. Come out of there immediately. That's what I'm trying to do. Give me your hand. <laughs> You won't catch me with tricks like that. Keep your distance, monsieur. Okay, okay. Now. All right. What were you looking for? I love how we've basically got dick dastardly on this one. Got your nose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was looking for a clown. Huh. Ridiculous. Do you really expect me to believe that? He planted a bomb in the cafe and blew it up. What? The cafe? Blown up? Mon Dieu. That is awful. And you say the person responsible was dressed as a clown? That's right. He blew up the cafe, escaped into the sewer, changed his clothes, and came up here. Ah, mon Dieu. Then, the man I chased. Do you think that man and the clown are... One Both game. Batman. Well, oh. yes, it had crossed yeah. my mind. Ah, that still does not explain... A cafe? It's Paris, there's millions of them. Yeah. yeah. For all I know, you are in league with him. Oh, no. Get him, he's in league with the clowns. <laughs> Most tourists are content with the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, or the Pigalle. I didn't realize my waist height was such an attraction. Um... Raising? Tell me about the man you apprehended. <laughs> what is there to tell? He was a typical criminal type. <laughs> Just like you. Um... Oh, that's a neat mod hell. I've actually got a brass uh, seal stamp now, though. Uh, but thank you for that. Do you know the waitress at the cafe? Oh, hey, she isn't hurt, is she? No, she's fine. Oh, thank heaven. A poor girl like her isn't safe with the likes of you roaming the streets. Can't you Bit understand? Harsh. I'm not a gangster. I'm an American tourist. That's what you say. First manhole, manholes, now waste pipes. I feel like the writers were on a Freudian slip and slide for a bit here. A little bit, yeah. And we've been talking, we've been asking people to show us their toolboxes and everything. Just, you know. Does the name Plantar mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. Who is he? The man who was killed in the cafe. I'm going to find the guy responsible. I'll find him. Even if it means following him down every sewer in every city in Europe. Bravo! Ah, you need some sensible boots. You won't get far in those stupid sneakers. They look more like brogues, actually, but okay. Was the guy you saw carrying a briefcase? Well, I, I, I didn't notice. Uh, now are you going to leave? Or do I have to call the police? Um... <laughs> Oh, you won't be calling this the police, he says, the brandishing the uh, manhole cover opener. You are up to no good down those sewers, what you? 
One slip and I would have been up to my neck. Uh, um... <clears throat> These people are obviously thirsty even they're upset at one destroyed cafe. Yes. Take a look at this false nose. I've never seen it before in my life. What does this tissue mean to you? Nothing, monsieur. It's uh, oh, disgusting. That's what fair. What on earth possessed you to show it to me? Someone I just like showing you things. enough tears into it. <laughs> That is a very good response to a, a point-and-click protagonist just showing you something out of their pocket. Like You don't often get that in point-and-click games where the characters you're showing stuff to are just like, why the fuck are you showing me this? It is utterly pointless to me. I know nothing about it. It's disgusting. You're weird. Stop it. Or I'm calling the police. George, your typical American never asking for consent. Oh dear. Yeah, we don't like that. Consent is key, folks. Do you recognize this material? I am not telling you anything. You showed me a snotty tissue. I'm not talking to you anymore. <laughs> Perhaps you'd like to take a look at my card? Mm -hmm. What is this? Inspector Augustin Rosso? And now. Ominoi Division? A homicide. I think the ink's smudged. We're impersonating a police officer. You are not a tourist. Okay, I'm not. I lied to you. And I'm sorry. Don't apologize, monsieur. You know, I had a feeling there was something different about you. It is your posture. Your, your <laughs> you body. always have to ask, do you want to see what's there in my pants no before just whipping out the big red nose? <laughs> yeah, exactly, Cole. It's very important. I, know. I was... In the army, you know, when I was your age, I was fighting for my life in the African desert. Uh, how can I help you, Inspector? Does this piece of material mean anything to you? Ah, that is the same cloth as the jacket I found. There we I go. I recognize that pattern anywhere. Now, about the jacket you found, do you have it here? No, monsieur. One of the sleeves was badly torn, so I sent it for repair. <laughs> A pity, because otherwise it was a fine piece of quality tailoring. It had the tailor's name inside on the label. George Asda. Where did you send the jacket? I gave it to an itinerant Romani seamstress. Just my luck. Was there anything in the jacket pockets? Mm -hmm. Not a sou. You know what I think? Do tell me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he changed out of the clown suit and cunningly disguised himself as an ordinary person. Hmm. Well done. Looks like I'm up against a mastermind. <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> what was the name on the label? Ah, it was a foreign name. Todrick, I think. Did you get the address? There wasn't one, monsieur. Only a telephone number. Well, I don't expect you to remember a phone number you've only seen once. 74980859. You're kidding. That's his phone number? Yes, that is a little secret number that I learned in the desert. I was taught the technique by a Tuareg shaman. That's incredible. <laughs> it comes in handy at the supermarket checkout. Uh, do I get a reward? Honesty, monsieur, is its own reward. <laughs> and I'm glad I do not rely on honesty to pay the bills. Um, did he just admit to being uh, shady? I think he did, didn't he? Tell me about the man you apprehended. <laughs> he was a mean one, monsieur. He grabbed me in an arm lock. His face suddenly met to mine. His grip was like iron. But he did not know what he was up against. Oh no. He made a big mistake when he took on one of the desert hyenas. Yes, yes, I get the picture. I think we'll finish up once I've completed this chapter, which I think is soon. Uh, and then I'll send you, you on to someone else. I'm kind of peckish. 
Come on, go get some of your contact facts are, surely. Just answer the question, please. Yes, sir. I know her quite well, you would say. Oh, really? She came to work at the cafe over six, seven months ago. I look forward all week to the relief she gives me when she visits. Really? Um. So you'd oh. miss her if she wasn't there. Oh, mais oui. Who else would I find to cut my donut? Um. Okay. What other boys at your dirigible, mate? Does the <clears throat> plantar no judgment here. You? No, it doesn't. Was the guy you saw carrying a briefcase? Why, yes, he was. Clutched in his arms like a baby. That belonged to his victim. Oh, what do you think was in it? Drugs? Stolen jewels? Anything I, I can know, sell? But the killer thought it was worth a man's life. <laughs> Nothing is worth that, monsieur. Except for things he can sell. I know how this works. I have to be going. Thanks to your help, the citizens of Paris can sleep a little easier tonight. Vraiment? I was only doing my duty, monsieur. Good luck, inspector. I hope you catch that killer soon. So the clown had escaped into the sewer, come up into the courtyard, and then slipped back into the street here. It wasn't much, but it was more than the cops had got. And we can make phone calls from here. Well, who is this? Hi, my name's George Stobart. You don't know me. Correct, Mr. Stobart, I don't. What can I do for you? Well, I'm trying to trace one of your customers. Could I maybe come over and talk to you? No, no, that's not possible. Oh, okay, uh, forget it. Listen, all I want is a name. What are you talking about? Who are you working for? I guess you might say I'm acting in the interests of truth and justice. <sighs> Thank God. I thought you were the police. There are innocent <coughs> lives at stake, Mr. Tardrick. Lives Can you tell this you was made by an English say. company? <laughs> Collecting for charity, yes? No, I'm not. All I want from you is information. Go on. I'm listening. What do you know about the clown who bombed the Café de la Chandelle Vert? I don't have no idea what you're talking about. You're cool, Tardrick. But I think you know more than you're saying. Cloak on the phone understands good info, sure sec. You don't yep. know what you're talking about. Oh, this is ridiculous. Quit playing games with me, Tadric. I tell you, I know nothing about no clown. Except for the one on the phone, do you? Do you know a guy called Plantar? No, I never heard of him. Shall I tell you what happened to Plantar? How he was killed in cold blood? I told you, I never heard of Plantar. George? To do good cop, bad cop, there needs to be two of you. You cannot be both the good cop and the bad cop at the same time. It makes people uncomfortable, and then somebody gets called and you get taken away. Not speaking from experience here. Um, I expect Plantar's a family man. <laughs> Unpredictable mood cop, yeah, very much. Plantar is cooking the supper, listening for the familiar sound of her husband's key in the door. Junior is waiting for his daddy to come home from work. He can't wait to show him the merit marks he earned in school today. Only tonight, Monsieur Plantar won't be coming home. You forgot the puppy, huh? The <laughs> faithful puppy dog, waiting for the sound of his master's voice. So maybe they don't have a dog. What do you think? I don't know Plantar. I never heard of Plantar. None of this has anything to do with me. Okay. Yeah, Thanks we're just we're just nothing, gonna hang up. Todrick. <laughs> Thanks for nothing, Todrick. <laughs> Fucking hell. I forgot my meds cop, which is a very serious condition, and someone should help George out with that, yeah. Yeah. I mean he thinks he's a cop for one thing, that's really worrisome. I'm sure this is a Wendy's. <laughs> 
so petty, this man. I know, right? Hello, Nico Kulak. Hello, it's George. Ah, oh, wait. Uh, you said to call if I could help. Have you any news for me? You bet. I met a witness who spoke to the clown. And I know where the killer gets his suit. No kidding. Hey, I'm impressed. You are? Well, it wasn't easy. Look, why don't you come into my apartment later this afternoon? Uh, fine. Where do you live? 361 Rue Jarry. Okay, I'll come over. Turns up with a bottle of wine, big bunch of flowers, wearing a tuxedo, dicky bow. It felt good with George on the case too. But there were some things I was going to have to do alone. And fast. I needed the answers to some questions. Who was the costume killer? And why did he murder Carchon? Why did Carchon yeah. ask for me to interview him? How did he know my father? And why was leaning in the doorway? So there was some kind of secret war going Pre on. Pre-signed marriage certificate in the back side. pocket, just in One case. Ju just in case. I wasn't going to get the answers sitting at my desk. Yes, give the mentally unstable American your home address. <laughs> This is a great idea. Nothing could possibly go wrong. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. That is us on to the next chapter. Um, as we've switched characters. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm I'm really enjoying that we're making this this lore of um George just being an absolutely terrible person. <laughs> We're just playing as, which kind of tracks with a lot of point and click adventures, really. Got the home video ready to go by the studio. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I have enjoyed this so far with you folks. I'm looking forward to coming back to this next Sunday. <laughs> there, have, there have been many laughs. I, I'm enjoying that we can poke fun at this game together and still enjoy what's going on with it. Um, th there's a lot to appreciate and there's a lot to laugh at. <laughs> okay. Um, so... Just gonna quickly save. Hello there. Hi, I'm George Stobart. You can call me, um, Skinny Penis. <laughs> that went well. <laughs> I'm not sure he's a bad person. He's just stark raving mad. Yeah, that too. But like, we've given him some serious nice guy energy, if you know what I mean. A sausage baguette. <laughs> Big lab energy, yeah, that too. Goodbye. <laughs> you are most welcome, Cole. You're welcome, Rust. Okay, I have saved. I have saved. Did anybody enter the giveaway? Labrahimbo. Yeah, he's a Labrahimbo. He's a mentally unstable Labrahimbo. Who looks suspiciously like, um, oh fuck. He's like a cross between the main character from Titan AE, whose name I can't remember, and James Sunderland from, um, Silent Hill 2. It's really weird. John Titan AE, yes. <laughs> yeah, um. It, it's so odd. Um, okay, if anybody wants to enter the. Hello again, Zathio. We're just finishing up. Uh, good timing, though, because I was about to say. Um. Nobody's entered the giveaway for a copy of Expeditions Viking. You can see more about the game by using exclamation mark cry as a cyborg has just done. There's a link to it there. 
though there's a um, an issue with the hyperlink, which isn't helpful. I'm sorry about that. Um, okay, Rocket has entered with 10 tickets. If anybody else wants to give Rocket a run for their money, now is your chance. Uh, exclamation mark ticket and a space and then the number of tickets you want to buy up to a value of 10 will get you your entries. I'll give you a, a moment uh, before I uh, close the giveaway and uh, hand the prize over to Rocket at this rate. Uh, yeah, I I'm, I'm really enjoying revisiting this. Yeah, no worries, Sophia. Um, I'm really, I'm really enjoying revisiting this. It's, it's fun. Um, I will see if for next Sunday I can find a mod that will make the subtitles bigger so you folks can see what's being said easier. And add subtitles for cutscenes. And if I can find another mod that will fix the echo in all of the rest of the game. Because it's definitely not my sound setup that's caused it. Um, frankly. Because it wasn't echoing in the director's cuts bits that were added um, at the beginning of the game. So it's just something fucky with the uh, Steam port of it again, I guess. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> okay, I think it's pretty safe to say nobody else is going to enter the giveaway. But just in case, you have five. Four. Three, two, one, and a little bit for the lag. The giveaway is closed. And as there is only one entrant, the winner is Rockethead. Congratulations! Bye -bye. You won with a 100% chance to win. <laughs> You're most welcome, Rocket. You're most welcome, Ash, as well. You're most welcome, to Theo. I'm, I'm glad you folks are having fun with it, too. I really am. Um, I, I will send you that code in a little bit, Rocket. Uh, okay, let's see who we can send you off to on this fine Sunday. Oh, now there's someone you don't see live very often. <laughs> Your mum is on cooldown, text Squig. We are gonna go and see Salamander. Because I don't think I've had the opportunity to raid them ever. So, I will be back on Wednesday. Um, probably doing hobby happy hour. I'm thinking we're going to bring that back as a, a regular Wednesday night thing now. Um, I haven't decided what we're going to start painting yet, but I've got a couple of ideas. One of them might even be seasonally themed. Um, so hopefully I'll see you all then. But as always, until I do see you next, whenever that may be, I want you lovely beans to take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Wash your fucking hands. And have a wonderful week, everyone. However you're spending it. Now. Okay, say hi to Salamander. And have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.